Birdie Boy Productions is so excited to present Shane Torres' first stand-up special called Blue-Eyed Mexican. It premieres at 4 p.m. Pacific time, December 10th on YouTube. So please go to YouTube, 4 p.m. Pacific time, December 10th, and check out Blue-Eyed Mexican. You can find it on Shane's YouTube channel, Shane Torres, or Bert Kreischer. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait for the world to see it. Are you like a gray sweatpants kind of guy? I'm sweatpants. I had and a, loose dong? I had, Bert, I went, you have I daughters. Had, and I Just put like, on a pair of panties, and, Bert. And, That's all we need. This week, Tops Off World Tour, Rochester, Worcester, Newark, Providence, and Albany, New York, December 10th. Apparently, if you do a lot of sit-ups, you can uh, get a, like a chafing on your on your on your taint? on your no no not your taint but on your uh, like tailbone. Oh, and it's, it's uh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> and I, I've sent a picture of myself naked to a group of friends, mm-hmm. and someone's like, and someone zoomed in, and they were like, "Did you? Are you doing sit ups?" <laughs> but it's my ass cheeks <laughs> that they saw. Um, we are uh. We are kin in body positivity. We are. Yeah, I, I, I love your special. It was oh. a great. It's a great special. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but I love that. I love that you talk about. You know, I have I have such an interesting view on it because mm-hmm. I I I never I like I, I've always liked what I look like. Same. It's other people who've been like, you need to change something. Yeah, and yeah. It I there's a a woman. I'm, I'm gonna f- Lin- Lindy West. Okay. She wrote a. I apologize if I'm murdering what what her point was <laughs> because I heard it so long ago. But it was about the idea of coming out as fat. Yeah. To your family and yeah. being like, you need to accept my lifestyle. Right. Yeah. But it, it might. I mean, I my dad will never hear this. Yeah. But my dad completely fucked me up when it comes to food. Because like you have body dysmorphia with it. Well, I think I look fucking awesome. I yeah. like myself a lot. I really <laughs> I like myself maybe too much. See, that's the thing that we have something extremely in common because I'm overly confident too with every aspect of my life. And I think that's why I've been successful because when other people were like, "Oh, she doesn't fit this role or she shouldn't do this," I was like, "I'm just going to show up and prove you wrong and just fucking do it." You yeah. know? Oh, that's yeah, there is uh, there are people that wait for the door to open for them. Yeah, and then we're busting through. And, and I don't even realize I'm doing it often. Yeah. I don't realize that I've made a very loud entrance in a room and I've made <laughs> a lot of people uncomfortable. Yes. Same. Same. It's funny growing up too because like obviously, I mean, I named the special son I never had because I talk about like the physical attributes I got from my dad. Yeah. Um, and how Is your I dad was, still alive? No, unfortunately he passed. But um, yeah, he passed a cancer a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, wait. I think I know this. Yes. Uh, and. He died. Pancreatic cancer. Yeah, pancreatic That's cancer. Not the way you want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> pancreatic cancer. <laughs> pancreatic cancer. No. <laughs> yeah, but when you have pancreatic cancer, you're fucked. Like it's only a one percent chance that you're going to survive. You're don't out. even say it out loud. We yeah. don't even want to say that word out loud. He uh he had a week to live. Like literally, they thought they misdiagnosed him with diabetes, and that was the irony of it because my dad was a big Southern dude. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, you finally got the diabetes because you have to get tested through the FAA because he flew for fun. And every time they would like take his blood and everything, they're like, oh, you're like healthy as an ox. So my mom and my sister are really petite people, and then I had these like shoulders and I was like this chubby kid and so I would do all the physical manual labor in our house that if you know my dad would have had a son that's what <laughs> they would have done yeah I, the but your dad uh is your dad from the south yeah your mom's from Boston my mom's from Boston and my dad's from the south so I'm just like this weird anomaly people like your wife today was like you don't sound like you're from Georgia I'm like I know how to put it on <laughs> but I'm also grew up with my mom who's like packing the kind of yard so I'm a mix it I hope this doesn't sound like a a backhand compliment. Just hit me. With but that. when you when I started watching your special and you mm-hmm. talked about body positivity, uh-huh. I never saw you as overweight. Like I never. Yeah. You're. I mean this. I hope this comes out. I'm in a room full of women, so yeah. I, I think it's okay. <laughs> but you're very pretty. Thank you. And so that's what I saw first. Well, I appreciate and I, and I, that. And your videos, uh, every video I've ever seen, I think yeah. the very first one I ever saw of you a long time ago was you flying on a private jet service uh-huh and you, and i was like whoa what's the jet service i was like whoa what's this and then i start and then i start i far, started following you yeah and but i you're you're extremely attractive thank you well i'll take it you know it's interesting because i guess being in hollywood like i'm a i'm a size 14 so i'm a bigger I don't even girl know what the fuck that means. it's it, honestly it's the average size of the the u.s woman right but yeah. i've always been very pretty but 
all my entire life. I mean, I was a chubby kid, so I'm sure there's some sort of chip on my shoulder about that. But I never, even when I was a chubby kid, I never thought like I couldn't do anything. I was like, yeah. I will have boyfriends. I'm going to do the damn thing. But growing up, like do in the grind in Hollywood, the shit that I have auditioned for, like is fucking insane. Like I used to, I auditioned for this one very famous show on NBC and the breakdown was morbidly obese, but beautiful. And I remember going into it being like, what the fuck is this? Like was it, I, was it, was it Mike and Molly? It was, this is us. <laughs> The what? Chrissy Metz role. I don't even know what this is. Okay, well, she, you know, I mean, it was, it's for like a yeah. very specific type. And I was going in there. My agents were like, they want you go in, just audition the, for it. I'm like, this is insane. The problem with Hollywood is that they, no, I mean, look, the problem with Hollywood, the problem with America, it's yeah. not Hollywood. Hollywood isn't doing it on purpose. Right. Hollywood doesn't go, Hollywood's not sitting back there going, we need a black guy in this. Right. But, <laughs> but real black. Like right. that's, but that's what they say. Right. They really say that. Like, we need a southern black guy in this, mm -hmm. but they're saying that because they get lit up by the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. If you're not Hollywood, would Hollywood would just have fucking hot, attractive people and everything, and, and everything, they would, and they'd be like, "I don't give a fuck about anybody." Right. And so, but the the crazy thing is, is that they America will not respond to just a moderately overweight person. They need to know that you're fat. Yeah. They need to be spoon fed that you're fat, so you get. My wife has a great story that I'm not certain I'm allowed to tell. Mm -hmm. But she was in an audition, and she was with an agent, and he said, listen, you're not hot enough to be a hot chick, mm -hmm. but you're not fat enough to be, like, the best friend. Yeah. Like, so you need to either gain weight or fucking lose a ton of weight. I've been told that my entire life. They're literally like, you're a normal size human, but I have really broad shoulders and big tits. So I come off like standing next to any guy in it's Hollywood. It's fucking holy grail of hot chicks. <laughs> Dude, big tits catch you a long way. But the funny thing is too, I think because like, obviously if my husband were to get hit by a bus tomorrow, like I'd probably end up with a black guy because black guys like women with curves. It's white guys. Like growing up- We start, just talked about this in the Cayman Islands. There's nothing- there, I, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. Yeah. But I'm starting to appreciate just a little bit more to touch. Tits and ass. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. I don't know if I could fuck. I mean, God forbid if something happened to Leanne, I'd try, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could fuck. Like, we, there were like, uh, there was a skinny girl walking on the beach. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I feel like that. I feel like I'm, I'm too far gone now. Mm hmm. But yeah. brothers love. They do, so I always like feel very. Uh, I, I have a lot of confidence from that too because I'm always like, all right, I know there's a specific like uh, uh, demographic that you know will take me in with open arms, which is yeah. like good to know. But also, I mean, listen, I also do stand up, so it takes a very specific confident guy to be like, I don't mind my wife getting up on stage and shaking her tits and like you know ripping me a new asshole for for content. So yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. I had my wife pull. Toilet paper out of my asshole for content <laughs> this weekend. Listen, I want to tell you, I, I this is going to sound creepy, but I love being an outsider looking in at your family because <laughs> the way, and I know we just met, but the way your relationship, A, with your wife is amazing. And the, your relationship with your girls reminds me so much of how I grew up with oh, like for real? my dad. And like, I know that y'all are the people at a restaurant who people are like, can that table shut the fuck up a little bit? Because y'all are having such a fucking good time. Yeah. Like my entire childhood, it was my dad, my mom, my sister, and I, and we were fucking just having the best time of our life. We laugh really hard. Yeah. Like we are, uh, yeah. I, you know, it's so funny. I, Leanne said that, that where we just got back from vacation. And Leanne right. said, we didn't fight on this vacation. And I said, I don't think we ever really fight. Yeah. Like I just don't, I'm not like, uh, I don't look for that. The worst thing you got to do is deal with me, and like, uh -huh. and the worst thing you get is, especially like after this, after this, on vacations, I somehow do not treat myself like I'm on vacation. I treat, I party, mm -hmm. and I get, and I like to do activities, and I like yeah. to work out, and I, I like to, and I almost burn it at both ends on vacations, and then I get like uh, quiet at the airport and <laughs> introspective, and yeah. Maybe I have like a little bit of a tiny meltdown uh -huh. where I got to go sit somewhere else and. Because you've been overstimulated. Because I'm overstimulated. Yeah. And so, like, that's the worst thing you deal with is me. But we laugh. We're, I think it's our currency in our family. Same. And also, like, you know, obviously I do a lot of bits about my husband. Like, my new hour is all about, like, this first year of marriage and, and how he drives me fucking nuts. But I'm like, he's my buddy. Like, we have a fucking good yeah. time together. And I think that's hard for a lot of people to understand sometimes. I think there's, a, I mean, I, I, I have been like this. I've been in relationships where... I was bummed out and I looked at other relationships and mm -hmm. I thought, I wish I had something more like that. Yeah. Um, I, I, 
you know, Leanne and I talked about this a lot this weekend. I, I would love to do a bit about this, but it comes off mean. But there is something to be said for uh, not not searching for Tom Brady, yeah. not searching for Tiger Woods, for settling for like a really solid Baker Mayfield, or <laughs> yeah, you know, like just a good. Uh, my I'm friends with a quarterback who plays. I think he plays for the Commanders right now, or he did Taylor Heineke, uh-huh. and like, do you for you know you forget great is still fucking great you just not maybe maybe they're not the goat and so i think a lot of i think a lot of guys hang their hat on i want to find the the victoria's secret model Mm -hmm. who's funny as fuck likes to party Mm -hmm. can cook i want that she's not there you're not gonna find her you're not gonna fucking find her. by the way everyone ages everyone gets old one day one day one day i'm we're looking at models that were in uh fucking the first runway models and they've all aged and yeah. you're like and you're like oh wow they don't look like they did Cindy Crawford just came out and she was like why do I have to look like I'm 25 she's like I'm not 25 anymore yeah so she's like the fact that I'm aging is a beautiful thing because that means I'm still on this fucking planet yeah and, and yeah. dudes keep wanting to marry down yeah and, and they, I'm she's 21 years old she's 19 years old and for me I just go that I think there's something to be said for fucking being really happy with what you have yeah and not looking for something more but loving what you've got like being yeah. looking at your plate and going i ordered the best fucking thing my husband's the only person who can really tell me to like sit down and shut the fuck up like yeah. i'm sure the way leanne does with you yeah. like my husband can settle me in a way that it's just like he knows me and we've been together since we were like uh, in our early 20s and he's just like sit down you're being a fucking crazy cunt and i'm just like yes sir like i know yeah. he's the only person who can bring me back down to reality some days i'm like yes sir okay and he's like, i'm gonna give you a chocolate chip cookie and a glass of white wine i want you to shut the fuck up and i'm like yep you got it babe <laughs> like he Do just pair well yeah yeah it does it's nice oh, wow what was your path to here because oh, yeah because i'm I, I was curious of that because you you now you're in atlanta which is such uh-huh. a fucking gangster move yeah I had to get out. Okay, so my went to you went to Ole Miss. I went to Ole Miss. So I started doing stand up in high school. The first time I did stand up was at my uh, junior prom, and I rose to the senior class. And I was always a theater arts kid. Like I was always doing comedies and like one act competition plays, like total theater nerd. But when I started doing that, I was like, I know that this is like what I want to do. So I started doing stand up in high school. Went to Ole Miss, did theater, and then I moved to New York after that. I was doing like UCB improv sketch. And I was doing stand up, but I was really, you know, had a trunk full of wigs and was doing more character stuff because I. What dream- is UCB? Like uh, I, I'm. It's Upright this, Citizens Brigade. I know what it yeah, is. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. But I don't know what they do. It, Listen, I, I don't they fucking stand, know. I knew they did stand up shows yeah. at them, but I do. Is there like a class? Yeah, you like can go through the school, right? So you can, you know, do improv, like, and then audition for all the teams and stuff. And I know I do- all those dudes that started it and girls. Yeah. Amy Poehler. Yeah. Uh, Matt Besser. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. I'm, I, Ian Roberts. Yeah. Ian Roberts. They are fucking gangsters. They're gangsters. They're so talented. And I, but I, I never understood. Did they, were they teachers at the school? No. So they just kind of like paved the way and then you could like go through the program. I always wanted to do SNL. That was the dream. Like was doing fucking dream. character work. That's the fucking dream. So I, that's kind of the, the path I was going on. And then I moved out to LA cause I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, get dialed into more of the acting stuff. And I still started, kept up with stand up. How then old I are you at this time? Um, I'm like 24, 25. So how long were you in New York for? I was in New York for a couple of years after college. And then I moved out here, was out here for about four or five years. And then I had to pick up my life because my dad died all of a sudden from cancer, moved back home. And then once I finally moved home is when shit started to pop off. So wait, what I won't, what was it like going Ole Miss to New York? Because I went yeah. Tallahassee to New York. Honestly, I was ready. You know what I mean? Really? I always knew though, even in college, like my college boyfriends, I was like, if you think that I'm going to live like in the coast of Mississippi and, you know, help you run your daddy's bank, that ain't the journey for me. Like I, I knew from day one, I'm going to Ole Miss or I knew I was like moving to New York as soon as I got done with college. That's the, that's the, that is everyone we graduated with that went to those Southern schools. Yeah. It was like, that which is like back to that same thing a lot of those guys i think they're fucking really happily married with the chick that they fell in love with in college uh-huh. and then they know she wasn't a whore or she, you yeah. know like 
Like or you're at a the, casino in Biloxi cheating other wives right now. Yeah, you know, or, or, it yeah, could go yeah. either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let me, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, wait, let me say that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah let's you're just right, be honest about it. Um, no, I mean, listen. Wait, what am I talking about? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't even have one friend yeah. that has one of those. I know. Let's be really honest. Like, I think about some of my exes and I'm just like, yeah, like, I, I'm i doing okay. You know? I Lip- remember one of them doing, now that you say that, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a little, lot of sadness. I remember one of them was doing coke off the fucking dashboard of yep. his car. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, you don't have to grow up. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. And when I would date guys specifically, you know, and they would just say like, I knew that they were looking for a wife and that was not what I was, that was not my journey. I'm like, listen, as soon as we graduate and I fucking crushed in college, I loved it. I was in a great sorority. I ran the shit out of it. Like I loved, and I, my husband and I bought a house in Mississippi. Like we love going back. Oxford, Mississippi is the greatest place on the planet where I went to school. Um, Those old Miss games are fucking insane. Insane. There's so much fun. It's the best tailgating in the world. It's almost the place where everyone dresses up and like- you don't you don't wear a fucking jersey. You are suited and booted. You have chandeliers um, at the tent. I mean, you're eating crab claws, eating caviar pie. Pull up some pictures of Old Miss Do the uh, tailgates. Type I got to go to an Old Miss game. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping I'm like, listen, I'm putting it out there. I'm hoping to do game day this weekend because they're going to be in Athens, Georgia, and it's Ole Miss versus UGA. So I'm like, oh, put me on ESPN. I'm ready. Yeah, that's the Grove. Yeah, oh, it is wow. insane. Oh, that's fucking. Yeah. See, I. I I, li- I live sometimes in parallel universes, uh-huh. whereas I see something, I, I will get sad as if I missed that lane in life. Mm-hmm. And there's a part of this that I would have absolutely thrived in. But you I went to loved. where? Florida State? Florida State. Florida State, it was great. I mean, yeah. look, we had the, I, 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 w- I have no regrets. I did for college better than I think a lot of professional athletes. Like That's I, how I, I feel. I, I did college. Did it per- right perfectly. Uh huh. Perfectly. They wrote an article about it <laughs> saying I did it. I partied harder than anyone in the country. Yeah. But when I look at something like this, I go, that must, that, that's got to be cool. Going to Ole Miss set me up for so much success in life. I now have, I mean, I can literally get on the horn and I have 300 women at my disposal. Like, if you need a new kidney tomorrow, they're like, we gotcha. Yeah. Like, just being in that sorority life. Running the show, it was fucking incredible. People have such a stigma on, like, you know, the SEC and, and Southerners. I'm like, no, I can network the shit. Anything that I need, I've got somebody from my sorority that I could call that can help me with something. That because that is a network. That's that, that's yeah. a thick network. Thick network, and my, I love these girls. Like, my they're daddy incredible. can get you one of them. Hold on, one second. I, uh, listen, I needed a private plane once because I had a show. I had to get from like Oklahoma City to like Costa Mesa, California, and I just make a phone call, and they're like, "Hey, daddy's gonna pick you up in the jet." This on us, you know what I mean? Like oil money. My, 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 I have to say, my my, I just went to Tallahassee for the first time. Yeah, in twenty five years, and no, 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 I for to, to a game. I went to the first game in twenty five years, and since I graduated there. Mm-hmm. And my buddy hooked it up. Shout out to Hartley. Mm-hmm. And it he he covered me top to bottom. I don't, I couldn't imagine what the price point on what that experience was. Right. But it was, I mean, lunch with the athletic director, you know, like just uh-huh. uh, pictures with the president. The, I mean, yeah. like those pe- I mean, I am, I'm so far away from that world only in that I work on weekends. Right. I'm never, you know, and I don't live there. And, mm-hmm. but man, they, they are living the life. They've got uh, that is crazy. The the networking that goes on in schools like Ole Miss, Florida State, University of Florida, Alabama, yeah. Georgia. Is Ole Miss the one they wanted to change the name? The Skylight Calendar is a smart touchscreen calendar and organizer for all your chores, groceries, and to dos. It automatically syncs all the different digital calendars and events your family uses. And shows them all together in one beautiful touchscreen display. Skylight Calendar is the best way to give your family peace of mind to enjoy all the things that matter most. The Skylight Calendar is super easy to use and set up. It works by syncing all the events from already existing calendars you have, including Google, Outlook, and Apple calendars. You can also add events directly using the touchscreen or with the free Skylight mobile app. It shows all the family events together in one spot. So you can see what everyone has going on each week. Families are more likely to check it since it's always up to date, up to date, and it's right in my kitchen. So no one's asking Leanne what our schedules look like anymore. We just go to the Skylight calendar. Events are color-coded so you can visually map out your family's plans for the week into beautiful 
color-coded time blocks. I may not look like a calendar guy, but I am a hardcore calendar guy. I've gone through so many different calendars, and I used to make my own calendars for myself. I love how easy the ones are to use on the phone, but I got to be honest with you, my vision's going, and I can't see what's going on. It's nice to go into the kitchen, have a cup of coffee, sit in front of our skylight calendar, and look at my day's events. Look at the month's events. Look and see what the girls got planned. As a special limited time offer for our listeners, Get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight calendar when you go to skylightcal.com slash Bert. To get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight calendar, just go to skylightcal.com slash Bert. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-C-A-L dot com slash Bert. The holidays are here, and that means one thing. It's time to break out my favorite outerwear from True Classic. True Classic's ultra-comfortable, perfect-fitting essentials makes the perfect gift for the man in your life or the men in your life from jackets to jeans to sweaters, everything they make is crafted with premium fabrics to help you look and feel great anytime, anywhere. And right now for a limited time only, you can get yourself and the men in your life, the most loved gift of all at a discounted rate, get 25% off your first order at trueclassic.com slash Burtcast. But seriously, whatever you choose, you can't go wrong with true classic All their clothing, from the t-shirts to the jeans to the button-up, is designed to be versatile and work with your lifestyle so you can look and feel your best all damn day long. In fact, True Classic is so committed to their products, they even have a 100% perfect fit guarantee and easy returns. Men, this is the perfect gift for you, but also a gift for her. So, if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash birdcast and save up to 25% off your first order and the year with holiday cheer. Thanks to True Classic. Is Ole Miss the one they wanted to change the name because they they said Ole Miss was... Yeah, I mean, Racist. we've also changed like we were the rebels. Now we're technically the land sharks. We've we. I mean, listen, there's a lot of yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of layered sharks. history. Yeah, you guys are the land yeah, we're sharks. the land sharks. We were the black bears, and then was like, we haven't seen a bear in Mississippi in a minute. Now we're the land sharks. Um, so Wait, they were yeah. the fighting rebels, right? Yeah, we were the. It was Colonel Reb, and I, he kind of you know he looks like a guy who ran a plantation. So <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't great. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Uh, pull up the old mascot. Yeah, the old mascot. I want to so, see yeah. the old mascot. So that's our land so shark, the land Tony. Shark. The Land shark, and now we have, yeah, yeah but at Colonel Reb. I mean, we when I was in school there back in what 2005, 2009, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> y'all, yeah. y'all from, ain't from around here, yeah, we ain't from around here, but oh, we changed, uh, yeah, look at the uh huh, yeah, Rebel Pride, Rebel Pride. See, that was that, but here's the thing that when I came into school, all this shit was going away, and I, I mean, I felt like I had one of the most culturally diverse, and like Oxford's the coolest place, there's so much blues music there was like William Faulkner was from there there was like I mean it was just I had a fucking really cool experience so in my mind even coming from Atlanta I was like Mississippi is the most backwoods bullshit I I mean I showed up and I Mississippi's fucking awesome it's the best like the Mississippi Delta is fucking cool Um, we would go up to Tunica and go to the casinos after the games we'd already be blacked out like Mississippi's Fucking it's the best. Awesome. And I brought my husband who's from New York. We went down there and I was looking at like a, you know, an investment property and I took him to Ole Miss. And he was like, we're buying a house today. He's like, this is the greatest place on earth. So now my husband who went to Penn State, who is the most New York guy, is decked head to toe in Ole Miss gear and he loves it. And he sits in the Grove, he eats fried catfish, hush puppies, you know, drinking yeah. a bourbon, smoking a cigar. And he's like, this is God's country. <laughs> Mississippi. Now, here's the problem. If you do the math on Mississippi, because uh-huh. I've done that. Because I've toured, I take fully loaded down to Mississippi every right. year. You did, where did you go? Did you do Biloxi, Jackson or Biloxi? Uh, yeah. Biloxi. I don't know. Where did we do in Mississippi? Jackson, maybe Jackson. Yeah. But um, it, it, it they do lead uh, the country in a lot of astounding stats. Like uh, obesity. Illiteracy. Mostly obesity. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Childhood diabetes. Crime. <laughs> yeah. There's some really astounding stats. Bad water. Stats. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's Jackson, which is a shithole. And I'll yeah. say that to anybody. Like, Jackson is a shithole, yeah. but then the rest of Mississippi has so much cool culture and art and food, and it's the best. But Jackson I, is I a nightmare. Love, I took a kid. I took a kid. These two kids from Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and we were doing trip flip, my old Travel Channel show. Yeah, and I took them, and we were in Mississippi, and I said, uh, we went to one of. The, I love. I love uh, like gas stations in the South. Yeah, like the old. Yeah. Fucking 
like cement cinder block gas mm -hmm. stations. Do you have chicken that, on a stick when you oh, go down there? If I eat the pig's feet. I eat the de the pickled eggs. Yeah. I eat boiled peanuts are my fucking favorite the thing, thing in the, in the entire world. world. Yeah. There is nothing better than a Cajun boiled peanut. Mm -hmm. I get the I get the thirty two ounce cup every fucking time. Yeah. So I said now I, now I have I had not been to Mississippi in a while. And I said, but but I'm with these two kids, two little kids from uh, Pittsburgh. And I said, you guys want to see a redneck? And they're like, yeah. I said, go in. Uh -huh. I said, that who, the, the person behind the counter, that's a redneck. Like, my mm -hmm. wife's family's a redneck. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, and I was like, you guys, just go in. I'll meet you in there. But that's, I want you to see a redneck mm -hmm. just authentically. Try to understand them. Try mm -hmm. to talk to them. You won't even be able to understand <laughs> these them. These kids are yinzers, so they yeah. have no idea how to communicate. <laughs> so they go in, and they come out, and they're like, we have rednecks in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I said, what? And they're like, yeah, my dad's doctor is a redneck. I was like, huh? And I was like, in Pittsburgh? And they're like, yeah, we have, I, there's lots of rednecks at our school, too. Mm -hmm. And I walk in, it's a fucking Indian family. <laughs> The Indians, uh, like apparently all the, in, like in the South now, that's all who owns gas stations. Dude, There's, they have a conglomerate. Yeah, They're running an so, empire. Like yeah. a fucking idiot. <laughs> this guy just saw a poo and was like, those are, that's what you call those rednecks? Yeah, yeah. We just call them Indians. Yeah. And so I was like, no, that's not a fucking redneck. That's not a fucking redneck. I was like, my bad. Ole Miss was a ton of money. Like I was shocked. My dad had a um, King Air when we were growing up and he flew and like that was a big thing, right? Like he had, he was very successful successful in his business and then had what a King Air. What did he do work for Coca-Cola? Uh, no, no, no. He um, ran a big mortgage company and basically like essentially like invented the software for the online credit report. Like that was, yeah, that was my dad. Really? So he was really successful. So it was always cool where I was like, my dad would pick us up in the King Air and fly my girlfriends around for lunch or whatever. He shows up for the first Ole Miss game. He gets out. I pick him up at the airport, the Oxford airport. It's just Gulf streams everywhere. And my dad gets out. He's like, am I the fucking brokest guy here? He's like, <laughs> God damn it. And my sorority sister pulled up in her game day G wagon. It was red. And she's like, get in, Kyle. We're glad to have you, sugar. And my dad was like, oh where God. the fuck are we? So like Oxford is this like little hidden gem of just like old money and is the fucking shit. I mean, even though he, Kyle had success, he showed up and he was like, we're the brokest fucking people here. Like what the fuck is happening? It was the fucking best. It's the best. That's And so then right to New York and then. Yeah, right to New York. And then I came out to LA and then I went back to Atlanta for a little bit, back to New York. And now I'm back in Atlanta. I always say like when you're in LA, you're doing the work. But as soon as you leave LA, that's when they call you. They, as soon as you leave, that's when they want you. I gotta leave more often. You gotta get Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. We're, we're talking about that. Yeah. Where would we're, you go? No, we're not, we're not talking about it. We're going to be here forever. Yeah. But we're talking about like where we want to go. Like where we, like where I, we are, my theory is I've attached, uh, I've, I've attached debauchery to everywhere I am. Mm. And so I was like, what if we bought a place that was just about longevity, like just about health like what if like we, a wellness spa no no yeah but but a house like okay. a, a ranch in colorado uh -huh. where we weren't like our it, it it was it was like there like was living hike, off the there land. Were hikes and uh -huh. there was like there was like mountain biking and yeah. there was like things that we loved we don't love to do any of those <laughs> we like to drink tequila and smoke weed and have a cigar at the uh -huh. end of the night but i was that, we were talking about that like what if we found a place in montana mm -hmm. or in colorado or or Taos, New Mexico, yeah. or like, or like Santa Fe, New Mexico, where like health is the thing people mm -hmm. do there. So if we're surrounded by other people have their shit together, trying. maybe we'll have ours. Yeah, I, I've, yeah. I've, I, I'm, I'm trying to think the against what I my normal thought process has always been. I just want to compound. I want to compound with all my friends, and I want us all to have little cottages together somewhere. I don't care where it is. I mean, preferably the Turks and Caicos, and oh. we just raise our kids together. And then I go on the weekends. I do my shit, and I come home. Like I that that would bring me so much joy. I I, I'm, yeah, it's been my goal my entire life. Yeah, the compound is the shit. Brad Pitt had a compound with Jennifer Aniston. Oh. They they had a compound. Yeah, it was on there. my old street up on Bronson. Yeah, in, uh, yeah, in uh, Beachwood Canyon, I would see him down there all the time. So. Yeah, I, that would be badass. But you got to be. I, I would like to have. What would be cool is to have like four families. But I'm the father of all the families. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I hear you. We'll bring in like a older family. We could bring in like a ethnically diverse family, and then obviously a young family, 
and then I could be the parent to all of them. And then I'll bring that. Leanne. I'll let Leanne run all the families. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's really very romantic. Yeah, I want everyone to run their own fucking families. I just want to be in charge of like, you know, mine. Yeah. But I would like us all to get together and like, you know, like right at five o'clock, I want a dirty martini. I want to have all my girls there because I'm so really good friends with like all the people that I grew up with. Really? And it's like my three best girlfriends. And I just want to be on a compound. All of our, all the husbands are friends. I'm like, I just want to raise all the kids together. And I just want to, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, I love everybody. I love people a lot. And I'm just like, you're my buddy. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Yeah, a compound in Turks and Caicos. To com- com- yeah, insane. that's my spot. That's where I go to like turn my brain off. That is my happy place. I remember a long time ago, uh, one of my buddies was like, he was he's very rich. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what if we all moved to Santa Barbara? Yeah. And he was like, I bought land for all of us. Mm-hmm. And then we'll all build houses there on it. I don't, none of us had money at the time. He had money. And he was like, we'll all live up there. And... We'll all just be like right on a cliff in Santa Barbara. We'll open a comedy club up there. We'll all mm-hmm. work out of there. And I remember saying to Leanne, "What would would you do it?" And she's like, yeah. "No, I'm not gonna fucking <laughs> move with you and Rogan and Segura and Joey Diaz just, to fucking first of all, Santa Barbara." Y'all will get kicked out of Santa Barbara. It's uh, too sleepy. Very fucking. Santa quick. Barbara's nice. Montecito's nice. It's too fucking sleepy. It's yeah. too quiet. No, 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 no. You need to go. I think maybe doing the Austin route where everybody else is going or whatever is smart we, idea. We've talked about buying uh, land in Austin, and then because the other problem is. Having a tour bus, you God, this is like the most unrelatable fucking conversation I'll ever have <laughs> in my life. I am so fucking broken. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, I think I was better as a young comic because mm-hmm. I was like, I, I was hungry. And it, and then once the the things you know in your life when you get older, you're so dialed into your one thing that mm-hmm. you, you become... I don't even, it's like no wonder fucking you can't have Seinfeld on a podcast. What's he going right. to fucking talk about? What's he going to talk His house in the Hamptons? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Howard Stern has, he doesn't leave his house. He's like yeah. Howard Hughes. Yeah. And he's like got. Agoraphobic, like, right? Yeah. I think he's agoraphobic. I think the pandemic really fucked his head up. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what is he? It's like, he talks about having lunch with Martha Stewart. Right. Or, you know, like. Nobody else can I, relate and, and to by that. Way, and I love Howard, Howard Hughes. Yeah. No, I love Howard Hughes. I love Howard Stern. Yeah. I love all those people. But when you live that life. You're just, you're disconnected. I think that's what's so beautiful about you being in Atlanta is you're, yeah. you are, you I'm out of it. I'm out of the scene. You disconnected. When I come home, and I literally, like, my mom lives with us. I moved into my childhood home. So my husband and I were in New York during the pandemic, and then we came down. We bugged out of our apartment. We were like, you know, and we have a, a nice setup in Atlanta. And my mom was like, well, I don't, you know, necessarily want to sell the house. And I was like, well, we'll buy it. So now we're redoing it. And like literally my, my husband and my mom are like having lunch right now in Atlanta. It's not normal, uh, but we're doing it. And it, so my, my mom was out here for my big shows in LA this weekend. And, you know, I have a 75 year old redhead with like perky tits who just yells at me all day and still puts shit in a basket at the bottom of the stairs and like literally yells at me like I'm 13 again. So I can't get away with anything. I have her to keep me so super grounded and humble. And um, I love her. It's crazy how our parents age and they become like they do, is your mom who you remember her is when you were a child absolutely really that shit crazy in the best way possible my mom was 11 years older than my dad and yeah really yeah she was the original cougar they met in miami international airport they were both working for eastern airlines she saw him eastern airlines eastern airlines shut the fuck yes. up my dad was driving the lavatory truck and my mom was working baggage she was like the new girl in baggage claim and he showed up one day and he was like she's hot and my mom just remembered he, my dad was super funny. And so she found out what department he was working in the next day f- called. And they were like, Kyle, there's a woman on the phone for you. And he was like, well, the only person who knows where I am right now is my mother. And it was my mom saying, Hey, let's go, let's go to lunch. And the rest is history. A month later, he, he moved her out of her own apartment, like kidnapped her, stole all of her shit. She came home to her apartment. She's like, all my shit's gone. I think I've been robbed. And he's like, no, I moved you into my apartment. Like, that's the kind of man that was my father. Fucking, Fucking, yeah. I missed that. Yeah. And my parents were, like, madly in love. Like, I'd always see, you know, I just, all my other friends were always jealous of, like, the love that I grew up with seeing my parents because um, my parents were just, like, hot for each other. I mean, my dad had a catheter and when he was dying of cancer and he was like, Rob, will you give me a blowjob? Like, that, like, up to the dying moment. <laughs> I'll be like that. Yeah. Oh, I'll be like, sure. Leanne, come on. Uh-huh. Come on. So, um, yes. and, now, and now you live with your mom? And now I live with my mom. And where's, where's your sister live? She's in Atlanta too. She's oh, a big yeah? time power attorney. So we're all in Atlanta and it's great. I mean, I'm on the road so much that I come back and I love being there. I'm a member of like a ladies nine hole at our country club. You know, really? I'm playing golf I'm, on my day off with these like women over 65. It's a beautiful life. I really love it. God. And then when I come to LA, I do the thing. I play the game. 
as you know, you know, shake hands, kiss babies, whatever, get, blo- you know, hand jobs. And then I go home and then I fucking go home. <laughs> That's so, kind of nice to go home. I don't ever go home. I mean, I, yeah. I'm home now, but it's homes always work. Mm-hmm. But it's but I also don't think I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, I don't really think I don't think of my work as work. I think of, I think I'm always on holiday. Like, I don't know yeah. what day it is. I don't ever. either. I'm I'm kind of like I'm in the upside down. I don't know what's happening. It, it's Monday. Couldn't tell you. Because when you live on the road, you don't know where you are at any moment. I yeah. mean, I still have, after touring for like four years, I still wake up sometimes and I don't know I'm in Cincinnati. And I just, I have that panic, you know, in like a four season, you're like, where the fuck am I right now? I'm in Cincinnati next week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know, but I like, I, it's so yeah. funny. I I never, Yeah. when you when you said where in, in Mississippi were you, I was like, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. The place that flooded. The place that flooded. I think that's where we were. I remember them being like, oh, this was flooded last week. And we were like, oh. Okay, probably around Jackson. Yeah, it was. And there was a tornado when we were in Mississippi. That's about right. That's just, there that's was, Mississippi. And there was a good cigar bar. And we went to, uh, and yeah, and there was a tornado. And it's where, uh, it's where Elvis bought his, uh, his first guitar. Oh, well, he's from Holly Springs. So that so would have been close to Tupelo. Oxford. Oh, Tupelo. Yeah. It must have been Tupelo. Yeah. Um. Have you ever thought about getting a mentor? Oh, God damn it. Do I need somebody else to give me unsolicited life advice? I, but, no, I will say there's been a lot of great women in comedy. Like Whitney Cummings has been, she, I can text her at any time of the day and she will get right back to me and be like, don't do this, do this. Don't trust that person. Do trust this yeah. person. She, I mean, she was the one who like, I met her two years ago and she put a fire under my ass, to, like produce my own special and shit. She was like, let me, let me give you the, you know, advice. I mean, I. <laughs> Whitney can. Whitney can fire hose you with advice too. But I love it though, because yeah. I, I, again, I'm, I'm out of it. So I'm not in LA. So if I'm in Atlanta, I'm like, you know, who is this person? Because I'm kind of adjacent. I'm meeting everyone. Oh, she knows yeah. everyone. She knows everybody. She's like, you got a weird mole. Let's remove it. And, um, you know, if yeah. you want to get your tits done, I got you. And I will, you know, use my attorney. Like she's the she, fucking best. She, fucking five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> she had someone send. Uh, Leanne anti-aging peptides out of nowhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, the guy and, and Whitney. <laughs> I think Whitney used her own blood work for Leanne and was like, "Just get them, give them to Leanne." And yeah. then, and then Leanne, she's like, "Hey, just start taking them." Just and start Leanne's taking like, them, huh? But she's I, like, "Don't ask any fucking questions. Just take them." Yeah, and I trust her. Yeah. I trust her on that. If she's like, you walk into her house, she's like, "This is the prebiotic soda you need. Just start fucking chugging it." You're, you know, you have the best shit of your she life. Knows, you're like, "All right, all right, yeah. Whitney." I want to. I would love to be there for her birth. Yeah, I would love. To, I wonder if she, oh, she should charge that on like. Uh, like I'm sure she is doing some sort of fans. production. For me and my it, like mentor esque, I just basically live my life like WWJD. What would Joan do? Whatever Joan Rivers did, like that is what I want yeah. to do. It would be great to have a Joan Rivers that you could go to. Yeah. For advice, I was thinking about getting a mentor. Uh, uh, what, who who are you going to ask? I don't. That's my problem. Is here's that, the like, people th- that are more like successful than you and like a little bit more famous. They're completely out of touch. They're going to be fucking nuts. I got to take my fucking shoes yeah, off. Yeah, get comfy. They're not my shoes. They're Mark Wahlberg's shoes. But why don't you call Mark Wahlberg? He'd be a great mentor. Well, yeah, but that's see. So, well, because I think I'm older than him. So, I, my mentor mm. would have to be older. I was okay. thinking about this this week. I really respond to coaching well. All right, like, I, I respond really well to coaching mm-hmm. and and rules and parameters. And I and I'm I'm trying to figure myself I do not. out. What, so you do not. That's good. That's good that you do. I, well, I don't respond to being told what to do, mm. but I respond to coaching. Okay. Like if they say, uh, like, uh, I got into a fight with a guy at customs in Cayman Islands. Mm-hmm. He, I had three things of Rogaine mm-hmm. and I put them in a little plastic bag and I went through security and then I took them out of the plastic bag. He goes, no, 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 no. Those stay in the plastic bag. And I went, uh-huh. no, they don't. And he goes, this, you can't take them out. And I said, is anyone checking over here? And he goes, you never know. And I said, I think I do. And I go, I go, sure. I'll keep them in the plastic bag all day long. And he goes, hey, for real, do not take them out. And I went, I won't. I promise. And I started smiling. And he goes, I think you're taking them out. <laughs> and I said, I'm definitely taking I'm, them out. Yes. I said, when you're not looking, I'm taking them out and I'm spreading them out on all my bags. Uh-huh. And he was like, it was, but it was this weird fucking power control yeah. of like, you, you can't tell me to do, you're not going to tell me to do that. You're not going to, like, this is stupid. This isn't a real rule. We're not mm-hmm. allowed to do, we, we got to play with real rules. And then I, and then, but I was sitting on the beach and I was thinking, I would love like maybe Phil Jackson, maybe like oh. someone like, like a, like a mentor. I, I talked to Pete Carroll for the Seahawks. Uh-huh. I like those guys because 
everyone, it seems, is giving people advice online. They're telling you how to get in shape, what to eat, how long to stay in a sauna, how long to get in a I trust plunge. none of those people. Do they're, you? They're telling you how to make a million dollars. Yeah. To, I mean, everyone, everyone, there's so many experts on the internet right now that's all i see I and mean, maybe that's just my feed mm -hmm. but i was like where were these guys i'm getting pushed a lot of gary brecca stuff right now What's where gary brecca? Uh, he's dana white uses him at the ufc and he's like this like he's not a doctor but he's yeah, a medical guru I know who you're talking about yeah and he's just like you know do the 30 30 30 30 grams of protein 30 minutes of walking whatever and so i'm like okay i can do i'm an action steps person if yeah. you it's not necessarily coaching or respond to but if you give me a list of things to do i'm like oh, i'll fucking get it done yep. like challenge me but i also don't do well with a lot of like negative reinforcement so if somebody tells me i can't do something then i'm like suck my dick let me show you i'm gonna do it oh, i yeah. i go better that way i will listen i can handle authority but if you tell me i can't do it i'm like let's let's see yeah. I'll show you. Let's yeah. go. And th there's a guy that there's a guy that created a thing called the Hard 90. And it was 90 days. Yeah, but that's 90 days, no sugar. Work out outside. And, okay. I, and and I was like, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm in. And then I found out he he didn't, he don't think he even went to college. He's just some guy that said it. He just said it. He just he didn't, three he didn't, Adderall one day and just got no, fucking jazz. He has no <laughs> medical <laughs> history. He's yeah. just a fucking idiot yeah. who said something out loud and everyone started listening. And then you go, well, fuck. Like, and then and then I'm like, and, and I listen to the guy. And then there's so many of them. There's so fucking many of them. Also, I'm and never doing. there's a doing... lot of Indian ones, too. I will tell yeah. you, man, you if you are dark-skinned with a little bit of an accent, maybe uh -huh. a British accent, a British uh -huh. Indian accent. I'll, I'll believe listen. anything you say. I'll believe say. anything you fucking say. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. such a fucking Charge sucker. your crystals in the sun and then put them up your asshole. And you're like, well, that's what we got to do. I'm like, well, if it was good enough for Paul McCartney and John Lennon. Uh-huh. So, like, I but there's so many people like that that i i was like whatever where are those guys who are those guys when did this happen when did everyone get in shape when did everyone tell you you got to yeah. get morning sun when did everyone tell you you need to cold plunge when did everyone tell you uh that zone two fitness when did that i mean there's a couple ones like uh -huh. like andrew huberman who's obviously a, a genius. fucking doctor yeah he knows what the fuck he's talking about like there's a peter atia mm -hmm. fucking these there are a couple ones that have earned the right to say them out loud. But then you've got a million people just parroting what mm -hmm. they've kind of heard, and they don't even know what the fuck they heard. There was this guy that was like, I watched him, and he was online, and he was like, he's like, uh, this, I, he's got, of course, he's got an Australian accent, and, and he's gorgeous, and yeah. he's like, I'm out, I'm getting sun, this is the best thing for your life, this vitamin D, it cures this, this, uh -huh. this, and then getting in the ocean water, ocean water cures everything, and I'm I'm and I'm listening and I'm believing him, and then I'm like, who the fuck? What about skin cancer that killed Jimmy Buffett? What I the know. fuck are you talking about? I I I don't like to wear sunscreen when I go to Italy because yeah. I just feel like it's like pure sun. I yeah. don't wear sun. I'll wear it on my face, but I am kind of in that mindset. Like I feel a complete difference when I'm low on vitamin C. I have to take, yeah. or sorry, vitamin D. Yeah, and then but you're also like, I got a couple weird moles. What are we doing here? Where's the fucking balance? There is no balance. But see, you're the kind of person, you are like me, we're like all or nothing. But I like to rise and relax. I'm not rising and grinding. I need to yeah. start my morning a certain way. I peak from like 4.30 to, to, to midnight. That's when I thrive. These people are yeah. like, you got to get up at 4 a.m. You got to do 10 <laughs> miles. Yeah, I'm exhausted. People, I listen to people who are like, I only sleep three hours a day. Yeah. Oh, and then those guys like, are fucking assholes. And then I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. Who's this fucking guy? And then now they're like, uh, eight hours is what you're supposed I mean, like, no one, there's so much information that's coming off yeah. the internet these days. And maybe it's my fault. Maybe I, but that's what got me thinking. Mm -hmm. You need I, a mentor. I, like, or like a coach, like a real coach, like mm -hmm. a guy who knows how to lead men. Like, like. And but do you feel like you're always going to be chasing the fix it? Like, yeah. have you ever thought just to fucking relax, have a bourbon, be nicer to yourself and just like chill i wrote that down in my journal this weekend uh that i need to like me a give lot yourself more. some grace i don't i don't give yourself some grace but i, I i've watched so many comics give themselves so much grace and uh -huh. then their specials are garbage mm. and you're like you're like no man you got to beat yourself up a lot you got to kind of hate yourself yeah. you got to hate your act you got to hate you got to pick yourself apart like you hate yourself mm -hmm. so that you can not do the thing that people will uh, highlight like you just and i don't know there's I, i'm a little bit well, you can be critical of yourself when I'm it comes to your critical. art, I'm, but that's these are two different things. I'm critical of myself with my life. I'm critical okay. of myself on everything. Like I'm, I'm very critical. I'm very punitive. Uh huh. And so, uh, 
and and but but that's why I, like I, I sat with Pete Carroll or not sat with him I talked to him for a second mm-hmm. a second literally I said Pete if you give me any advice what would it be and mm-hmm. he was I was like coach I didn't say Pete I said coach if you give me any advice what would it be and he said find the spaces between the spaces mm. and I said what well, what the fuck does that mean I was like god damn it I, then, I, I'm not then, bright enough to, to to figure out what that means. Yeah, I'm so stupid that I heard that. And I yeah. went, fuck yeah. Yeah. And then I didn't listen to whatever <laughs> the fuck else he said. And I was yeah. like, fucking spaces. Yeah. Is that like a store? What are uh-huh. we where are yeah, we going? What is spaces? Where is the space? And it, I think he was trying I think what he said was find the ha- the happy pauses in between the like like the being success? being able to turn it off mm-hmm. and be present doing something else like everyone always says like a hobby is really good but i, I have no okay yes yeah, says the people who have time for a fucking hobby yeah. i feel that way too i was like man i gotta do something to like turn my brain off because my brain is i, I am very self-critical when it comes like the art but my life i'm like i've got this figured out right yeah. the family life i have that figured out but i'm also in the space now where people are like when are you gonna have a kid when are you gonna have a kid i'm 36 and they're like well you gotta have a kid you know when are you and that's on me i can't outsource that really truly yeah, i so, think you can I, there's a russian couple that does it oh I, those people who have like you're trying to go for 100 yeah, 100 yeah. assholes, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, 100 children absolute assholes um but no i mean i hear you uh but yeah like i don't even know what the fuck do you feel I was like do about. you feel like you'd be incomplete if you lived a life without a child you should not have to worry about buying tickets for the next big event. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what you're expecting before you arrive. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Literally, two taps and you're set. We're going to the Flyers games. We're going to the Flyers game in Philadelphia tomorrow. And we use game time. Cat Williams is at the Toyota Arena December 29th if you're in L.A., and I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Joe Coy, February 16th at the forum. By the way, you're going to need to use game time to get tickets for these because I'm almost certain. I, I think this is going to be sold out if it's not already. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code Burtcast for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code B-E-R-T-C-A-S-T for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. We are supported by Omaha Steaks. The holidays are here. Let Omaha Steaks take the guesswork out of gifting. Shop carefully curated gift packages that are guaranteed to make the spirits bright all winter long. Go to omahasteaks.com and save 50% off site wide. Did you hear that? 50% 50% off. That is a huge savings. Plus, when you use promo code BIRD at checkout, you get an additional $30 off your order. You can send tender, juicy, butcher cup filet mignons, mouth-watering burgers. I'm not lying. Their gourmet jumbo franks are the best hot dogs you will ever put in your mouth. I swear to God, this Thanksgiving, the, day, the night before we did burgers and dogs, we did Omaha Steaks, burgers and dogs, and my dad called all four dogs that came in the package. He was like, they're all mine. No one, Those don't go to kids. They're never going to appreciate it. Those go to me. Only a man can appreciate this hot dog. I stole one. I didn't eat it with a bun. I'm keto. Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order right away, so shop early and beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code BERT at checkout. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com. Take advantage of the 50% off site-wide. Plus, use promo code BIRD at checkout and get an extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Do you feel like you'd be incomplete if you lived a life without a child? Um, No, but I definitely want kids. I want a family. Yeah. I don't crave the baby. I don't crave the feeling, <laughs> any of that. None of that. I don't have that connection to it. I mean, I love when I'm loving on my, you know, friends, kids, but I want like the eight year old who can sit and I can go to the movies with them and they're like, can, you know, they're so good for material. Yeah, so Good for material. But also I just want somebody to give, give me the shit right back. You know? I mean, I'm bummed. We're going to lose Isla next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, either the military or college. I don't mm-hmm. know. What it yeah. Would be. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but she's going to leave us. And I've been spending so much time with her lately. And she is such a fucking bizarre brained person mm-hmm. that uh, 
I'm going to, it's going to be hard to live a life without our children mm -hmm. because our children is what, you know, it's what Leanne and I talk about. Right. Is the girls and, you know, and, and they're, and it, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll come back to LA. I'm sure they're, I don't know who knows what they're going to fucking do. Do you but think either of them want to be in the biz? No. Yeah. Not at Smart. all. Smart. Great. Not at all. Good. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think Georgia would make a phenomenal comedian. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I don't know what I'm not really certain what Isla's going to do, but she, I think she, whatever Isla does because she's so dyslexic, she'll be she'll find something out, do something different mm -hmm. than anyone else, and probably make more money than any of us. My dad used to write letters to my sorority house, and they would read them out loud at the Delta Gamma House. It was like top ten reasons why you should quit doing theater and comedy and um, be, you know, join the Air Force. And it literally they would read them aloud in the chapter room because my dad was just so afraid. He's like, listen. I know you're talented. He's like, but I don't have any connections in that biz. And yeah. He was just like, I don't want to see you fail. I don't want Hollywood to take advantage of you. And I was like, dad, don't worry. I got this. I got this. Yeah. He would literally send a letter a week to my sorority house that they would, it, we'd end up getting like drunk and sitting around and in front of 300 girls, they would read out this letter of like, why should become an accountant? Why I should go to pharmacy school? Like all the reasons why I should do anything but what I'm doing now. So now it's bittersweet that I've had success in this and he's not here to see any of it. You didn't any see of any of it? No, I mean, my dad died in 2015. And then it really, I mean, he would like see, you know, the early days of like stand up, but shit really took off for me like 2018, 2019. Yeah. So no, any of like the real success he's not here for. That's, that's bittersweet. That, that's, that's fucked up. That's a bummer. Yeah. But you have to, I, I mean, you have to, you don't have to believe in anything, but you, you, you got, I believe that they see it from up there. No, I know. It was, I, I know he's around. My dad always comes back as like a yellow jacket or a bumblebee. That's like his signal to me. And I was getting ready to shoot this special in Kentucky. And I walked out of the stage door and there was just bees everywhere. And I literally Shut was like, he's here. Up. On my wedding day, there were bees on my flowers. I got married in Italy. There's like not bees in Tuscany. They're like bees everywhere. He's always visiting me. Can I, I'm going to, I'm going to miss, remember the story. Yeah. But I, I went to, do you know who Dimitri Martin is? Yeah. The comedian. Yeah. yeah. I went to his wedding. His, when a long time ago, he got mm -hmm. married and then he got divorced. I don't know if he shares that, but uh, well, you did. So I did. Yeah. I, did. I, I, I did. I went to his wedding with a bunch of Jews, by the way. Oh, and great. Maybe my favorite thing I've ever done was mm -hmm. was uh, uh, I'm sure it's a semi hate crime, but make Jews stand up during the mass, mm -hmm. during Catholic masses. Mm -hmm. I just go all right right now, and then they go and then they just stand <laughs> up, and I just sit down. I did it. I did it nonstop. Good for you. I yeah. did it nonstop. Shout out to David J. Nash, and so. Uh, but and his dad was a Greek Orthodox priest. Okay, married. I think you're allowed to marry, but is is passed away. And in the middle of the wedding, they brought up his dad, and a fucking dove flew into the oh, fucking fuck chapel. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. I'm sure the dove was like, "This one isn't the right one. <laughs> it won't last two years. She won't support your career. She wants to be a doctor. Yeah. She wishes you were a lawyer. <laughs> Go, take away, run, 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 run." My <laughs> my husband on my dad's deathbed flew down to ask for my hand in marriage. So that's when I, and my dad told me and he literally pulled me aside and he's like, Jeff, just ask for my hand in marriage. And my dad had like a day to live. And, it, and I was just like, and I was like, dad, you got to tell me, is this the right one? He was like, this is it. He's like, I trust oh, you. And, and so I had such a great relationship with my dad. So when he was like, this is a good one. I was like, all right. Was your dad into sports? Oh, huge Georgia Tech fan, huge Atlanta Falcons fan. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, but being an Atlanta sports fan is like the most heartbreaking thing in the entire world. Yeah, tell Miss tell that to Miss Pat. Yeah. Poor yeah. Miss Pat's Oh, Miss Pat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's just, I know. It's, it's been a hard a fucking, year for us. She's been a Falcons fan forever. She still wears Michael Vick jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. And, you know, it's wild now because I'm friends with all these professional athletes because their wives are fans. So oh, then, yeah. like, Jeff's, my husband's got to really elevate his life. Like, we go to the Masters every year because we're friends with all the golfers. And, yeah. and we'll, um, and the year that the, the Falcons went to the Super Bowl, we had a bunch of buddies on the team. And it was like the saddest, you know, it's just, it's yeah. being a Atlanta sports fan. You just keep your asshole clenched and pray for the best. What, uh, how did, so what was the thing that really took off for you? Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, cause I, I have a theory about, uh, success for okay. comics All right. and it's that you need something, something viral, but behind that you mm. need a body of work. Okay. So like for like uh, Rogan's a perfect example. Okay. I, I'm, I'm the real perfect example because I had the machine story go viral, but I had so much of a body of work that once you saw the machine, you're like, wait, who is this guy? And then you could watch 10 other clips. You're like, okay, I like this guy. Um, uh, Jim Jeffries got punched in the head at the comedy store. There you go. Long, and and then 
that clip went viral on MySpace, and he, but he was such a talented comedian, and he was ama- He still is amazing on radio. He just is amazing. He's an amazing talent. Rogan had the Mencia thing happen, mm-hmm. and then he had the Joe Show, which is this. I mean, he had such a digital footprint of great things, and he had a vlog that he kept up with. But like, those are the things, and I'm always wondering. Like, what was the thing you think that really took off for you? I started doing characters on Instagram. And I started to build a huge following from it. And then when Instagram stories became a thing, like however many years ago, I basically would use that as like a stand-up platform. And I would just do, you know, one-liners all day and yeah. jokes. And it just took off. So I think like a lot of the success that these kids are having on like TikTok, that's what I originally did on Instagram. Yeah. And my followers, I finally started talking to women. I knew that I was like, I'm just going to talk from my point of view and my perspective. And it just completely took off so i mean yeah you come to my shows and it's i mean fuck if you're a single guy come to my show and you will get laid immediately like it is the greatest place on earth because it's a, it's a lot a lot of you hot chicks just said the most important thing on this podcast because uh-huh. there's a lot of single guys listening and just went wait what did she say one wait, night i'm gonna google her yeah. i guarantee you <laughs> i guarantee you you're fucking you see your google trends and yeah then people will be like when's she coming to my city i was playing in orlando and it was two theaters and theo was in the theater next to me and we were our, our both of our audiences were sharing a um wow. uh, like a bar area <laughs> i literally put out the bat signal i was like ladies y'all want some you know guys with mullets just fucking go out if there if you're looking for guys who can't read yes out yeah, loud. that great <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and honestly i was like but if you're looking for a big dick daddy go find him and i yeah. told him to tell his audience like all the hot chicks in animal print are over at heather's show and i was like we're just trying to bring people together but then guys will come to the show because they're like oh my wife's a big fan and then they have the fucking time of their life so my stand-up too i mean is i really go a lot harder on stage than i do on the internet like i was talking to neil brennan the other day he's like you put up these clips where you're like being motivating to women i'm like i'm also being very sarcastic like if you come see me do yeah. stand-up i'm the most fucking you know sarcastic dark-sided person so um a lot of it is just but i just i knew to talk to women and I feel like nobody was really saying the things that they felt that they wanted to get off their chest and it just took off. Here's the thing too. Women will, once they are on board with you, they will ride or die for you. I feel like guys can kind of be a little wishy-washy, but the girls, they're like, oh, we've been following you since the beginning. I'm about to shoot my second special in Atlanta this week at the Fox. And I mean, it's just like, like the once they're behind you, it's like sorority sisters. Yeah. They're like, we fucking ride for her. She's our bitch. You need us to bury a body? We got you. There was a show called The Pump and Dump Comedy Show. Do you okay. remember them? Uh-uh. They were do when I was started selling tickets at clubs. They mm-hmm. were selling tickets at clubs. I don't know if they do still do stand up. You see if that see if you can find them, pump and dump comedy show. And it was just two moms who had just had kids, and the whole idea was come to the show, get drunk, pump out your breast milk, and throw it away. Oh, like, hell cause, yeah, cause pump and dump, yeah. And so, um, but you're right. It's an underrepresented. You know, stand up is so male driven Mm -hmm. so podcasting is so male driven that Mm -hmm. when you see someone who's speaking to that that group it's just so i was at my show in toronto this past week and there was a woman in the front row who was pumping the whole time they're still doing stand-up pump and dump it's 2021 they stopped doing (laughs) stand-up yeah what is the fucking what is the I love seeing somebody pump at my show. I love oh, the camaraderie in the bathroom. I would love to see someone pump at my show. It's, it's, I love seeing gay men at my shows. Yeah, for When sure. I see two, like I had a, there was a, I don't know where the fuck I was, but there was this, this dude, beautiful hair, beautiful blonde, Greg Allman, blonde mm-hmm. hair, and a beard, and but his boyfriend had his arm around him. Mm-hmm. So in the dark, I couldn't see that it wasn't a woman. Mm-hmm. And I started talking to him as if he was a woman. And then I realized he was a dude. Mm-hmm. And then I realized there was a gay couple. And I just was like, and then I was like, and then, I, tickled for, well, then, and then I get, <laughs> and then I get into this gluttonous fucking very so homoerotic that I think people question my sexuality mm-hmm. rant about where it's, it's almost like fucking uncomfortable for them. They're like, Jesus, dude, just get a fucking dude and suck his dick <laughs> enough. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love when I see gay men at my show. I have a lot of power lesbians, a lot of gay guys at the show, a lot of power lesbians who are like, let me run security for you. And I'm like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, Trish. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I, I love it because when the guys come, like, I'm always like, listen, I say the first thing 
out of the gate. I love doing crowd work with the husbands. Then I'm like, suck his dick tonight. And they're always like, that's why we love you, Heather. Like, I got yeah. your back. So, and if you're single, come to my shows. You're going to have a fucking great time. You're going to meet some lovely ladies. Guys will come by themselves. And I'm like, oh. you just were on, ended up on a party bus with 30 sorority sisters from University of Alabama. You know, like, you're going to have the time of your life. You should sell a shirt. Uh, you should sell a shirt at your shows mm -hmm. that guys can buy and put on that says, um, I'm single and ready to mingle. First time, mm -hmm. first time show, totally single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so people are mm -hmm. like, oh, he's new to it. Let's bring oh, him. Let's and bring then, him. Yeah. And then they, then uh, the, I'm, you'll get so many fucking psychos. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fucking incels will be at your show. It's just. <laughs> I've gotten a couple of them now from doing all these, man, you know, like straight male comedian podcasts. Yeah. It's funny because whenever I do it, I know the first comment is always going to be, like, oh, it's Tim Dillon in a wig. That's what I get every <laughs> fucking day. I do these podcasts. Oh, it's female Tim Dillon. And I'm just like, shout out to Tim. Um, but and then they come to the shows and they're like, oh, this was not what I expected. This is a fucking right. But I'm also like an old showman. Like I like to wear my glitter suits. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to wear jeans on stage. I like to put on a suit. And want you to know that you're going to be literally in your words like razzle fucking dazzled. Yeah, I, I that's that just makes me feel like I'm getting ready to go to battle. I feel like it, I feel like there should be something special, I, especially if you're doing theaters or or I, I think it's okay. You know, John Mulaney I think had a had a clause in his thing that if you came to his show, he wanted you to wear a suit. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I love that. I think it's awesome. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not that guy because I'm mm -hmm. like I am really. I am one of those people that when I find out there's a dress code, I start getting uncomfortable. Oh. And I go. Oh, I, a theme? Fuck me up. I love it. Oh, I can't. I lean in hard. I wore closed-toed shoes today because uh -huh. I wanted to try to dress up. I wanted to pick uh -huh. an outfit and dress up. Okay. And, I and got, this is what you went with. I got halfway into it. And I was like, <laughs> I take these fucking shoes off. How does someone sit in a house with shoes on? <laughs> they're very comfortable, but they're, I just can't. I'm like, I love being barefoot. Uh-huh. I love, I don't like underwear. I like, I like fucking. Okay. I like, I like being very close to naked all right you just like that you like to feel the wind on your grundle I, ju I just started wearing underwear on planes because leanne said you could see the head of my dick yeah yeah that's i i would definitely wear underwear on an airplane i will are I, you like a gray swamp a sweatpants kind of guy i'm sweatpants i had and a, loose dong i had hurt. i would you have I daughters had, come on i had a pair of sweatpants when we were doing what were we doing we were promoting razzle dazzle and I had, they had to buy me a pair of pants because you could see my dick so clearly. And by the way, I don't even think it was, I, I don't remember who we were with. I think it was Lacey. I, I might have been, one of the women was, it might have been Lacey or Victoria was like, hey, this, like, just giving you a heads up. You're, it's very inappropriate. Yeah. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're like, we can see your dick. And I just was like, just put on a pair of panties. And, for, and, that's all we need. And then I met mm -hmm. Charlemagne the God and he oh, looked Jesus at, Christ. oh, Isla was with me. It was Isla. It was Isla who made me get a new pair of pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. Wait, why was Isla with me? Is this a dream? I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Do you walk around in your underwear or like half naked around the kids now? Because my dad did that. My dad was a, we were very, it's weird to say it out loud, but my dad would just sit around like his, his underwear and we would like, you know, smoke cigs on the back porch. They've seen me naked a lot. Yeah. But they, but never on purpose. I was a. I am not an underwear guy, mm. so, oh, right. so I don't wear underwear, but I will put on pants. I'm, I'm a Speedo guy. Okay, yeah. So I was in Speedos in pools all the time, mm -hmm. their whole childhood. I'm, I'm, a, I'm swimming in a Speedo. It's stupid that you swim in anything else. It's You're like a goddamn dolphin. You're yeah. like just Very aerodynamic. Yep. You slide through the fucking water. It's like the only way I can really analogize it to a dude to try to sell them on a Speedo, it's like jerking off with too much lube mm. where you're like, I don't even feel it. Yeah. Like it's crazy. <laughs> just one with the water but i have my daughters and i think my daughter's friends have seen me naked on accident yeah like one time i got out of the cold plunge naked and i went into our backyard and uh i saw my dog mac on the backyard on the porch and i went mac and i'm totally naked right out of the cold <laughs> plunge and georgia and four of her friends are making breakfast in the kitchen and they all look out and i'm just naked yeah and she's and i hear a shriek of like, oh my god! And I'm like, oh fuck! But and then you gotta like write letters home to the parents. You're like, ah, guys, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, but I, I was, and I was a naked guy. Like when they were babies, I mm -hmm. I would walk around. I didn't know that there was something wrong with it. Leanne, I think, was the one that put the kibosh on it. And was like, yo, you 
If you're gonna get dressed, yeah, you can't just get dressed. I, I'm I'm a naked guy around here, but I say to them like I'll I, I'm someone that goes I'm getting naked. No one look. Everyone right. look down because mm-hmm. like you do. A, we're changing to do a su- something in front of green screen. Right. I'm not gonna walk all the way upstairs, go into the bathroom, lock the right. door, and then get trained. Then all the way all the way down. And so I was like that a lot growing up, like with the girls. But now I'm pretty. Now we're like Mormons. Like if I get dressed, I do it in a closet. I'm sorry, they're stifling your soul, but I do I think because they're because so they're crazy. what? How old are your girls? I don't know. Okay, no, <laughs> nineteen and seventeen. Shit, that's old. Nineteen and seventeen. Nineteen and seventeen, and they're like fucking humans. I talked yeah. to Georgia on the phone today, and she was like, "Oh, it's fucking raining," and I was like, "And I was like, I wanted to go. Hey, don't curse on the phone mm-hmm. to me." But then I was like, "I was like, is it really bad?" She goes, "It's." fucking raining and i went how bad she goes dad i can't walk outside it's like buckets i was like facetime me i want to see it yeah and then i was like i'm glad you used the word fuck because now i understand what you're saying my dad was the one who gave me like the real birds and bees talk because he was like i went to a very like strict private school in atlanta and he was like i don't know what the fuck they're teaching you but sex is a good thing he's and my parents were we always knew when they were having sex like it was saturday mornings they both come down in robes like as a kid i remember writing letters shoving them (laughs) under the door like can i make pancake can i make cereal but my dad literally he was driving me to like uh (laughs) i was like a sophomore going to a junior prom and he was like here's the deal just have enough self-respect to like you can enjoy sex he was like always use protection always say yes make sure it's consensual and i remember being like my dad's cool enough that he's the one really giving me like the teenagers birds and the bees like yeah. obviously i knew what it was earlier he's like don't listen to your mother don't listen to your fucking school they're gonna tell you not to have sex you're 40 he's like sex is a good healthy happy thing yeah. and i was like got out of the car and i'm like putting on my corsage of prom. I was like, thanks dad. But I was so grateful. Like once I got to college, I was like, my dad always instilled that sort of like confidence in me to be like, no, I'm gonna have the real conversation with oh, you. My, it was never awkward ever. My, oh, mine was only awkward. Really? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine, no, my, my, mine was no, I, 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 I even, I don't think I've ever had the conversation with the girls about the birds and the bees. I just send them videos from Pornhub that I like. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I go, here you go. This, this is new. I haven't seen uh-huh. this before. You should try yeah. this out. When my dad died, I was in charge of going through his laptop and I did find his like folder of porn. And I honestly had never felt more close to him. I was like, this is just honestly beautiful. Like it was just normal fucking oh. porn. And I was so relieved. I was like, thank God. Thank God. You yeah. know? I don't think I don't have any porn on my computer. I think oh, the, my daughters will have a stash of marijuana. Yeah. They'll be like, wow, dad has a lot of marijuana. Oh, my dad was the biggest, biggest weed smoker. For real? Yeah. He didn't drink that much um, because when he was running his company, it, he always instilled that. I mean, he's like, listen, you can't be the boss and like trying to close deals and be the fucking drunk one. He would like go out and entertain. But yeah. he's like, I have a responsibility at like the Christmas party to make sure like no one dies. So oh, he wow. would smoke a lot of weed. So when I, w- I, and I didn't realize until I was like 15 or 16, I would come home and I thought it was so weird. Like everybody else's dad's drank and my dad was just high all the time. Really? Yeah. And because he was a pilot he would obviously not drink before he'd fly or smoke yeah. or whatever but he he was a big stoner so my he also was like i i had a good sense of like when i got to college i wasn't one of those kids who like you know didn't know how to party i got there and i was like okay all you guys are blacking out and don't know how to hold down your shit i've already smoked weed with my dad like i you know really? i, I you can handle my shit dad? yeah yeah oh, wow. i was 17 and i was like all right dad well if we're gonna do this he's like all right now you know my shit and i smoked weed with my dad and so did my sister and it was like yeah i've never smoked weed with my i've never I ate edibles with my dad once, but that was because he ate them on accident mm-hmm. and I didn't want him to do it by himself. Yeah. And this was a long time ago. My dad, my, da- my daughter, Isla, just said, it's so funny. My parents stayed with my daughter uh-huh. while we were on vacation. And Isla goes, last night, we're, I was like, how are we, Nan and Papa? And she goes, Papa eats a lot of weed. <laughs> and I was like, really? And she goes, Dad, like, like a he's lot. fucking very high. And I was like, really? And she goes, yeah. And, I'm not certain that it it wears off when he sleeps because he only sleeps for like four hours. Right. So he's just perpetually high. I think he's, she said he was, he ate so much weed that he he was like, they had to help him get to the back house. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I was like, but that's recent. He just recently started eating a lot of weed. I feel like a lot of the boomers have just recently started eating a lot of weed. You know, my dad went, before I went to college, he sat me down. He was like, promise me you won't do two things. I was like, what the fuck is he about to tell me? He goes, promise me you won't drink gin. 
and he won't do cocaine. And I was like, gin. what? Gin and cocaine. He said, people coming off gin, off a gin hangover fucking smell. And gin drinkers are the worst people on the planet. And he goes, and you don't want to be the girl in the corner who's coked up at a party and won't shut the fuck up. I told Georgia, no pills, no powder. Yeah. But that came from Snoop, really. Yeah. I was. He said, no, no pills, no powder, you're fine. And I was God. I, you know, went to college and I tried all these things, but I'm still like, coke's just not my thing. And I was oh, never been my thing. Drink. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. See, I'm more of an Adderall. I don't know why if it's, it's in prescription. It's, it's, it's the it's same so thing. It's so much better than Adderall. Yeah. Adderall just makes you talk of it as fuck mm -hmm. and a tad bit annoying mm -hmm. and disconnected. Coke, man, you get all the great dreams. Like, you get all the fucking, you feel like Superman. Like, you, it's, I mean, look, I don't, don't do either, if, right. in my opinion. <laughs> is For real, don't. I trust nothing anymore. That's the thing, too. I'm always, like, I'm paranoid. I'm just, like, everything's laced with something. I trust no one. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I've sm I've been smoking a lot of weed lately. Uh, I'm gonna have to smoke a ton tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I wish I could f instill in my daughters a thing that I did never had was that find the beauty in sobriety. Mm -hmm. Like find the beauty in that's in sitting on your porch and reading a book. Georgia has that, and Isla both have. They both have it. But I wish I could give that to them forever. Like go like like I like I was with someone the other night. And I was like, wait, are you drinking? And they were like, no, I, don't, I never drink. And I was like, I was like, really? And I was like, I never noticed that. And he's like, well, no one ever asks. And then I was like, oh, mm. so, and I was like, so crazy. I was like, you just don't drink at all? And he's like, no. I honestly can't. I, I will party, but I feel like kind of like what my dad instilled in me, like this responsibility some days. Like when I, okay, when I come off stage, I'll have like two glasses of red wine, but I don't need to party party. when yeah. I Because when I do, it's lock us in, in the house and let's just fucking rage and do it. I love that. But I can't do it on the road. I can't, I cannot maintain on the road. Well, I don't know how you do it. It's, it's very well, You're easy. also on a tour bus. I'm getting up. I'm flying. I said, they wanted me oh, to I do the tour do bus. I can't. And I said, no, get me. I want the Delta Diamond points. Like, I can't. Oh, I don't want to no, be on the no, bus. No, 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 no. Um, they, uh, but, you're, but your dad was a part of Eastern. That Eastern Airlines. No one remembers Eastern. Yeah. And then my, my dad, my, so my, Dad's father, my papa, Captain Jack, was a big deal at Delta because he f saved a flight. He was a like, he was Sully before like Sully did his uh, you know uh, no, life saving what, flight. Yeah, yeah. What, what flight? Captain Jack McMahon, I believe it's Flight 1080. Um, and he saved a flight. There's a whole like Wall Street Journal article about him. He saved a flight. It was taken off, I believe, from San Diego, and the pitch was broken on the airplane. So they thought that he was like, well, we're gonna we're gonna you know just dive into the Pacific Ocean, and he was able to land at LAX and saved the flight. I mean, I have the black box recording of it. No so way. my grandfather was like a really big guy, big deal in aviation. No he won the way. Italian um, uh, award. Let's see. Yeah, that's him. Flight of yes, yeah, the saving of flight 1080. That's my that's my papa. What mm -hmm. year? What year? Nineteen. Uh, year? In the seventies. Nineteen seventy. I can't think. That's of That's when planes time. went down a lot. Yeah, basically, you know, the pitch is what helps you just keep going up, and then he, it, it was like broken. They couldn't get it to quit climbing into the sky. But so then my my grandfather, they had him um, do the simulator for all, you know to figure out what happened, and every other pilot they had do it crash in the simulator. He was really? the only person who could do it. Yeah. So he was kind of a legend. I come from this like he was he, in World War II. Uh huh. Yeah, Captain Marine Jack. Corp pilot. Yeah. Oh wow. And so he would fly like the inaugural flights for Delta. Like if they were going to a new city, he would fly the airplane, test out the airplane, then train everybody else how but to fly. Can you fly? Um, I could. I could get us down and up. Yeah. But um, I don't have no. If we were, I would fly in the cockpit. I mean, we, I could hijack a plane. Yeah, yeah. But. No, I literally could. I could hijack. If the, if you had a heart attack, if I was next to a pilot and they had a heart attack, I could figure out how to land. Yeah. I grew up in a Baron a Cessna one eighty two, a Beechcraft, like uh, a Pilatus. I would go flying every weekend with my dad. Really? We, he would take me out of school all the time when I was a senior. He's like, let's just fucking go to Athens, Georgia. Let's go to Hilton. We go to Hilton Head every yeah. weekend. We just threw our shit in a duffel bag got in a Cessna and we took off and I would sit up front and fly with my dad. That's one of my goals. When I get some time off, I want to get my pilot's license. Yeah. He had a hangar down at PDK in Atlanta. We don't live far from there. I'm like, that's my goal is to like build a studio there at PDK and then just tinker around, fly the Turks, you know? That would be fucking epic. Yeah. We grew up like literally dad would pick us up from school on like a Friday and like, all right, we're going to the Turks and we just hop in and we'd fly. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. It was cool. That I, I have a terrible fear of flying. So, 
Okay, and let's break this down. Why do you have a terrible fear of flying? It's a fear of death, really. All right, well, this is stupid. You're going to die at some point, right? uh, I don't even like thinking about that. All right, well, you are. Have you, and God forbid, you haven't lost anybody in your family, right? Like, immediate. All right, so this is why. You have a fear of dying because nobody's ever died on you. Once I lost my dad, that fear went out the window because I was like, the greatest person on the planet is out of my life, right? It's going to happen. It's going to happen to us all. Like, I just, your sense, your point of view and perspective will change. Also, there's no reason you should be afraid of flying because the pilots, the crew, anybody working that flight wants to get there just as safely as you want to get there. Oh, yeah. So you need to remember that. Anytime you feel turbulence, they don't want to be doing that either. So they're going to do everything to correct it because they have families that they want to go home to as well. I've gotten really good these last three months with flying. All right. Three months, I've flown sober uh, almost predominantly uh on the last two flights i had a glass of champagne when they offered champagne Mm -hmm. and uh and then i had a a drink and a beer before the other flight but like i've been really good with flying and i found that not drinking a lot in life Mm -hmm. cuts my anxiety down i start my fear of death starts going away because i'm living a little healthier i think when i'm not living healthy i have more of a fear of death because i feel like i'm i'm dancing with the devil yeah, but uh, but I would love to. F- I would love to be able to be a pilot. I don't have. I don't. You've have, been in a really small plane. I've been. I was a stunt pilot in a in a in in a plane for a TV show. Oh fuck! Okay. So they were like, they got me in, and there you're, you're the guys behind you. Yeah. And he's like, all right, we're gonna go, uh, right pedal, left pedal, mm-hmm. left pedal, left pedal, turn to the side. It's a hammerhead roll, and so then. We'd do that, and the plane would spin, and he goes, all right, now we're going to pull back, both pedals down, and you'd pull out of it. And so yeah. we, I did all stunt pilots stuff, and I, it's crazy, I think, because there's a camera on me, but for the most part, I didn't have a panic attack. I didn't freak out. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose my shit, and they thought I took a Xanax because they're like, so why chill. were you so chill? I said, I wasn't chill. I was terrified, but I had to do, to do the thing he said or we right. were going to die. And so... um I've been, I've done that. I've I've flown in small planes uh, a bunch. Yeah, a bunch. I've I've flown in. I mean, back in the day when like it's so funny. Right when Tom and I started kind of popping, and he moved mm-hmm. to Austin, and and we we were flying private a lot. Tom was flying private in like G sixes, mm-hmm. like big fucking jets, and I was flying private in the fucking worst planes you could find. Right. <laughs> because I was like I was like I could I couldn't I couldn't get work done without getting there private uh-huh. but i was it was so cheap mm-hmm. that i was like what's the cheapest flight we can get mm-hmm. and we had a flight one time where we had to i'm not lying piss in a bucket yeah and pour it into a hole yeah and 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 it That's was aviation baby it, yeah and it was how, how many seats were on the plane i want to say there was like two one was a three-person couch in the back okay and one was a bench on the side Oh yes, All and right. it was it was the there's video of it. It was me and Shane Torres in the way back. This is I think this is before Peter. I don't know if this is when Peter, before I had Peter, but I and and I've flown and I've flown in a lot of like I flew my cousin Andrew and I flew to Fresno in mm-hmm. a single prop okay um, plane. But and when we did that, the guy said to me, he was like, is, "Maybe this is something you'd like." And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to learn how to fly." He's like, "Well." help me we'll we'll do this together I'll, I'll i'll show you what i do and and when he started doing the checklist i'm the kind of guy that i put together the futon without looking at the directions <laughs> right. and i could already see myself fucking dying in a plane because uh-huh. i was like once i've done this yeah I, I bet i'd fucking skip i bet i'd start going let's just we don't go need to do the full let's checklist. fucking go yeah 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 check check, yeah. check 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 like i don't have the kind of brain that goes no uh-huh there's a protocol. We were taking off once in my dad's Cessna and we were, you know, just hauling ass down the um down the runway and all of a sudden like the, so the uh basically the hood came up and it like smashed the windshield because something had come loose or he was like, "Oh fuck, I don't." Yeah. And my dad was like the most safe pilot ever. <laughs> Literally we had to like slam on the brakes. We were about to take off and the entire cuz the trunk on that airplane was in the front and it like cracked the windshield and we were about to take off with no visibility. I mean, my dad is literally in the middle of flying. We were in the tiny little two seater. He's just like, would pop the door open and the door's just kind of open. He's like, ah, it's hot in here. <laughs> like, so I grew up just in these gnarly situations. Was it like bad turbulence? 
We are supported by DoorDash. Low on time? Make the hours you've got a whole lot happier with Dash Pass from DoorDash. Everyone deserves to feel like a VIP. And with Dash Pass from DoorDash, you can. Dash Pass members get $0 delivery fees and up to 10% off eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Dash Pass makes deliveries even more worth it, helping members save more than $35 per month on average. This is a no-brainer in my house. My daughter, Isla Grace, is obsessed with DoorDash. And her and and with the amount she orders, it is saving us dollar upon dollar upon dollar and making her feel like a VIP. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code BERT2023 and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code BERT2023. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. We are supported by CrowdHealth. Stop sending money to big insurance companies that profit off not paying your bills. Did you know that 48 million claims on Obamacare last year were denied? That's one-fifth claims are going to get rejected. Do you want to take that chance? Health insurance sucks. It's confusing, expensive, and frustrating. There is a better way. Welcome to the alternative. Crowd Health was created to get rid of the headaches of health insurance. For $175 for an individual or $575 for a family of four or more, you'll get access to a community of people who are willing to help out in the event of an emergency. You'll also get telemedicine visits, discount prescriptions, and more. All of this without doctors' networks getting in the way. Let CrowdHealth help with your health care needs. You can get started today for just $99 per month for the first three months if you use code BERT to get the health care you deserve. CrowdHealth is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, code BERT. So I grew up just in these gnarly situations. Was it like bad turbulence? Uh, oh, I love turbulence though. I, I, cause I used to be in a two seater with my dad and we would purposely like be bouncing around in the clouds. Like we would go to lunch and oh, that was like the most fun thing in the world. That, we had bad turbulence coming into Miami the other day. Yeah. Yesterday. The asshole was, was clenched. You were panicked. I, I was, I was, I was melting down. Really? This is my sister. She doesn't like yeah. flying. Watch this. Watch. Okay. Hey, Cotty, do you want to take pilot license with pilot lessons with me? No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. I'll call you back, okay? Bye. Bye. Like, it's, uh -huh. I think it's a fear of, I don't know. I fall asleep immediately on an airplane. Like, I'll get that first drink, and then before we even take off, I'm asleep. Black people fall asleep on airplanes. Oh, yeah, they do. Black people yeah. fall asleep. They're, I don't know what it is. I guess, I mean, there's got to be a joke here. Yeah. I guess the fucking regular life is so fucking... Stressful if you're if you're a person of color that when you get on a plane you're like fuck it I'm fuck out it, I'm out this is the worst thing that's gonna happen it's I'm gonna die with a bunch of white people on yeah. the plane um I said I, I flew next to Common one time and he was asleep before the plane took off and mm -hmm. he woke up when we touched down in L A and he said to me I was sitting next to him from Chicago and he said have we taken off yet and I went the fuck this I've taken a hours. Xanax <laughs> yeah. I've drank my face off. I also don't like being sitting still for fucking four hours. Yeah, I got crippling sciatica too. I got a leg that just goes down. So sit. I'm the asshole who's like, uh, I got, I'm in the galley, just like trying to do my if they physical had a therapy. Gym, if they had a gym on the plane, uh huh. Oh, I they could, had a gym. Yeah, bro. Like then, yeah. I, then I'd be like, I could find something to do. Maybe like a good like library. I mean, I have crippling ADHD too. I can only watch so many movies, you know. But I, I watch the dumbest shit on airplanes. But I have a glass of wine. I get excited. Like I'm looking at the menu beforehand. Oh, yeah. I still get a little well, excited. I, oh, if you're telling me we can drink on a plane, uh -huh. I love flying. Uh huh. Like if you're saying, hey, we're we're flying to uh, one of my favorite fucking flights is the flight to Australia because you get to the airport early. You get they have dinner for you on the plane. Mm -hmm. Like you get dinner, a full fucking dinner. We took a flight when I worked at Travel Channel. We we're flying to. On the A, what was the Airbus A380? Mm -hmm. And they took us early to go inspect the plane and look at the plane. And we got to see the quarters underneath the plane. Uh -huh. It was the coolest fucking thing. Here's the crazy thing is I'm really into aviation. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot about the planes and the type of planes. I know yeah. I know more than the majority of pilots because the pilots will only fly like one type of plane. Right. The majority of their career. And 
I was t- I've been on every fucking plane there is. I had the craziest seat you'll ever get on a plane. And I gave it away because it gave me too much anxiety. I had a window facing forward seat 1A on a double decker Boeing 7747 that was on KLM Airlines and the the way the fucking window was it was on the nose of the plane so you could see out the nose of the plane and i said absolutely you fucking not it. i was like i got to give it to someone they're like this is like the most coveted seat on the plane see if you can find that seat it's it's a uh, first class or it's probably business class but it's a forward facing oh, I'm an aviation nerd like I look up the planes beforehand oh, I get horny for a, it there's a website called Seat Guru oh I'm already on Seat I Guru used to all, I always used yes. to get the best seats the best and like growing up there were certain airlines we weren't allowed to fly really yeah Why? like we couldn't ever do Continental I think it's now no. United just because my grandfather was like no 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 he's like I do all the test simulators for that you're not getting on a Continental flight really there were very specific flights that we were only allowed to take we yeah. were so Delta yeah. Oh, we, my point's guy. Yeah. We had, uh, we flew a great, awesome. we flew an A, uh, the Dreamliner A7, A787 mm. last night. Amazing. It was beautiful. And by the way, didn't drink on the plane? Maybe I didn't. I don't think I did. I think I slept Where were you whole coming flight. from? Miami. Okay. And it's a, oh, it's a great flight. Leanne was sitting backwards and she was like, I'm sitting backwards. Do you know that they did that? Best airline, you got to fly South Korean Air. It will change your life. If you, when you go to Asia, oh, hold on. when I tell you, hold on, hold on. Oh, no. okay, t- pull up South yeah. Korean air, pull up South Korean air. I, tell me about South Korean. Well, no, just uh, when I say like uh, the best service I've ever had, the most comfortable pod. When I say like I had an amuse bouche, I had seventeen courses. Then they come through with like Perry Asia way, and then they got a full cheese cart. I was losing my mind. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are all old, but. Um, oh, I think probably that the one, best that service. Is North okay Korean Air. Yeah, please. Oh, shoes. Um, North Korean Air. Uh, is yeah, really North Korean rough. Air, not great. Not yeah. great. South Korean Air, first class. Give me South okay, Korean Air. Okay, can I tell you though? Class. I'm obsessed with North Korea in a weird way before people like really started becoming obsessed with it. I have just been obsessed with North Korea and just stay because I think my it's really hard for my brain to understand that they're literally completely off the grid and, and like what's going on up there. I, you know what? I thought it was, I, I, I just saw a documentary on North Korea and I watched a couple actually. I didn't know they have like cities and and like stores and stuff. Yeah. I thought it was all villages. Yeah, but then a lot of them are like a front. You yeah. need to go watch the old Vice documentaries. Those where they fuck have the, you where up. they where they do the building. Yep. Where they're like, and it's just all and it's all like fucking, it's all fake. It's all fake. I saw that. Yeah. So wait, look at this. Oh, I love a good. Oh wow! And the, I love like the lounge. If you're like on like Qantas or Emirates, they got the lounge in the back. So I'm having a Cosmo baby. That's the best flight I've ever taken. Yeah. I'll tell you the number one thing you got to do when you're in Australia, we did it, is get a boat for the day. Yeah. And when you're in Sydney, get a boat for the day. Go out. Mm -hmm. It's fucking just the water out there. Getting out on the water in in Australia is so... uh, Bondi Beach is like my favorite place I've ever been. I I was there on my 40th birthday, and it was the greatest day of my life. I'm a boat girl. Anytime I'm on vacation, I have to have a boat day. Yeah, we we that brings me so much joy. I I made that my goal this last trip to Australia. I had seen Joe Coy took a yacht. He got a yacht. I oh. didn't get a fucking yacht. Yeah. Uh, I actually hammered him. I was like, I think I made my promoter take me out. But I was like, I I was like, I want to get out on the water because it's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You guys see the three sisters? Okay. I would take a helicopter out. I would drive into the Blue Mountains and then take a helicopter back. Okay. Take a helicopter from the three sisters tour the three sisters and then they'll take you into sydney harbor they'll take the doors off and they'll fly you around sydney harbor oh, fuck it's fucking up. insane all right i'm writing it down but australia is so fu- such a great place with the coolest fucking people yeah how's the comedy scene like they it's just amazing. love it they love they're, they're like uh they're like rednecks who can read out loud hell yeah no offense My people. Theo. shout out <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're they're just like they're fucking awesome they're smart. Uh-huh. They're open minded. They're they're they get comedy. They fucking mm-hmm. love. They love. I mean, they love edgy shit. They love all of it. And they're and they're big partiers that like. And they're just generous. Oh, any as of fuck. my Aussie friends that live out here drink harder than anybody I've ever met. I can't keep up. Every and Australian I, can, I, can I can knows how to quit drinking. Yeah, and they're most. I mean, they like fucking. They get after it. And 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 the food's fucking incredible. It's it's Australia's like. 
I met my daughter Georgia when we took her. I, they went to tour with me when I was a few years ago. They went to Australia after we all went to Bali. They all mm. came and met me in Australia, and uh, and Georgia was so taken by the, by Sydney. She said, "I could live here for the rest of my life." Yeah, she goes, "This is the perfect big city. Like this is, it doesn't." It feel it, it's got a weird feel because it's on the ocean and it really is on on the fucking water. You get this vibe of like, like a mini San Fran, but with better weather, with hints of Vancouver, like all the best of all the great cities. Mm-hmm. Sydney is like, I'm not, not to suck Australia's dick, but <laughs> it really is great. Well, I always have like fans that will come to the shows on the, on the West Coast. Like they'll come to LA, San Francisco, Seattle, and they were all coming from Australia. So I was like, I know we have a market there. Like, let's go. Well, once once you do a Netflix special, it's you're shocked at, at how broad it, it translates. A lot of people. Is know, there like, anywhere you've been where you're like, yeah, like like Berlin, don't necessarily need to go back and do no, comedy No, I love there. Berlin. Yeah. I'm, no. Or just anywhere yeah, in general no, where you're like. No. Uh, no. Uh, there has to be somewhere, but no, I can't think of anywhere. Mm-hmm. I, I remember, I remember there was a period of time where I was like, I'll never do stand up in Amsterdam again. And the, but I just did. I think I just did, and I loved it. It yeah. was one of the coolest fucking experiences of my life. You know, there is there is a subtle, subtle, subtle uh, language, not even a barrier. It's a language hiccup in certain Scandinavian countries where they're they are listening very hard and they're like and they're like and and then you'll the punchline will come or the joke will come and they'll go oh okay very good right right takes and, a second yeah but it takes a second only because it's it, it they're they all speak english but it's not their very first language mm-hmm. so they're all like they're with you but those shows are still fucking insane like norway uh sweden do we do sweden no we didn't do sweden stockholm is that mm-hmm. I, I, I it it is because it's all flying for me. It's one blur of like one place of like just snow and white people, <laughs> and then and then Greece was out of out of this world. Berlin was great. Um, I'm excited. Like I can't believe this is my life. Like I mean, you know, I well, love that's what I the do. Way, I'm, that's the way I'm you should look at go. it. Is your yeah. husband coming with you? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. My wife's dead inside. She doesn't like doing that. <laughs> well, you know, people, people are really invested in my family too. Like, like how they are invested in your family. And then people get upset when my mom isn't like at every show. And I'm like, this bitch expects like a white limo to pick her up. Is asking me when, what we're doing for dinner afterwards. Like I, let me just go. It is still work. Like, let me go do oh, my job. That was the great thing about Europe is we would, because we were in hotel, we said, Hey, we ate at the fucking greatest restaurants in the world. Yeah. We ate at the greatest restaurants in the world. And we got really lucky. We were traveling next to the King of Denmark everywhere. Oh, hell yeah. It was like crazy. Like we, we, we went to, we were at the same hotel as him like three times. We did it. We got very lucky. We had a tour bus that would tr- travel us to places throughout the UK and, and whatnot. But we have a great, great, great travel agent who organized all of our hotels. Mm-hmm. I'm certain I mean, it would, it was frustrating at a certain point because the hotels were so nice that I knew that it was going to cost me an arm and a leg, right. and everyone was coming out. They're like, "Did you see how great my?" I mean, I stayed in the same room Bill Clinton stayed in. See, and so I was. Like, I'm the queen of an upgrade. Yeah, I got food poisoning that night. I, oh, shit. I had horrible diarrhea, and I wrote that in the book. In the like the, the guest I said, book. This is I've had the worst. Everyone wrote in it. Uh, Denzel Washington, yeah. Tom Hanks. Everyone had stayed in this room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barack Obama and his wife Michelle Bill Clinton stayed in this room and then I stayed in the room and in the book I mean fucking Sting stayed in the room I mean it's just crazy the right. people stayed in the room and then me where was this <laughs> I don't fucking remember <laughs> all I know is I wrote in the book I had the worst diarrhea of my life in this fucking room yeah. I shit enough for me and Bill Clinton <laughs> I was in um Thailand I travel a ton just even like when I'm not on the you road you really like traveling I love traveling yeah it's my jam I it is my jam. I was in Thailand and my buddy, who's my producer on the road, um, he went to NYU and he was like, hey, listen, my girlfriend, Mai, she's the princess of Thailand. He was like, she's going to come meet us for dinner. So I was, I'm a big foodie. Like I, I made this reservation at Gagan, which is like one of the hardest restaurants. In, it's like number you know five in the world. And I made this reservation. So I send them a message. I'm kind of like, think my buddy's bullshitting me. I'm like, all right, do you really?
really know that the princess of Thailand, but he went to NYU with her. So earlier that day, she meets up with us and it's a full motorcade, you know, security, everything. I'm like, okay, this checks out. So we're hanging yeah. out with the princess of Thailand. She's great. She's our age. We're having a blast. So I called this restaurant. And I'm like, hey, just so you know, I know I made this, you know, tasting menu reservation eight months ago, but the, the princess of Thailand's coming with us. Like, is that cool? They didn't believe me. So we show up and her motorcade had shown up like, you know, an hour beforehand to like scope the place out. And so then Gagan, the, the, um, the owner comes out and the chef and he brings out like two bottles of champagne. He's like, Heather, I thought you were bullshitting. I just thought you were some white woman being like, I'm coming with the princess of Thailand. I was like, uh, we no, don't all look alike. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, she is sitting at the table was waiting for us and they felt so bad. But like, these are the kind of situations I get myself into. So wait, where, where have you traveled to? I'm not uh, going to keep you here too long, but I, I'm, I'm curious about travel. Yeah. I've been everywhere. I mean, <laughs> I love Asia. Asia is like my favorite place in the where world. In Asia I went Cambodia, Vietnam, Korea, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam were like wild. Vietnam, I, I've said this before, but it changes your cultural DNA. Absolutely. It's such a crazy place to Being travel. on a little like moped scooter, I was like holding on to this like 20 year old Vietnamese girl. We're going yeah. on like a food tour. And we, I mean, there's 7,000 people in the streets. There are no, sh oh, yeah. there, there's no uh, signs of where to go or what to do. And I just had to close my eyes and I've never felt more alive than being on the back of uh, a scooter in the middle of Vietnam. I, I drove a motorcycle through uh, Vietnam, through Hanoi. Yeah, and beautiful. And then took them out. We had rode motorcycles out and through rice paddies. It would and change we, your we life. spent the night in the world's largest cave. Oh, it fuck yeah. It was a yeah. six hour hike in uh -huh. and a six hour hike out. I'm not trying to hike. You know, I'll, it was aggressive. I'll ride the 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 motorbike to again the four seasons in Hawaii. See if you can pull up Bert Kreischer World's Largest Cave. I I uh it's pretty fucking insane. I mean mm -hmm. it's insane. You could I mean I forget the stats on this cave, but it's in Vietnam and you I mean there's it's you could put a city inside this cave. And but, you slept in there in a was, tent or what? Was, yeah, in a tent soaking wet. No, yeah. see I'm not doing that. Oh, it was I'll it go was, to Vietnam and get some clothes made. <laughs> you know, like Yeah. We went into a village and uh these kids had never uh seen a dude with a beard before. Wow. Because they, you know, no no one really grows facial hair in mm -hmm. Vietnam. And they thought I was a monster. Yeah. And so I was going up to them going like Rrr! and they were ah and then I give them candy and I and then it I creeped I creeped some people out because I was like they wanted to put play with my beard. Uh -huh. And it looked like I was giving them candy to play with my beard. Mm -hmm. And they were like, and they were like, hey, you gotta stop. <laughs> you it gotta looks stop. like you're you fucking, you fucking creep. Yeah. Doing um, there, that's the cave. That's the cave. That's so funny. You gotta go to Cambodia. That was one of those moments where I was like, okay, this changed my life. Doing Anchor Wat, you get up at 4 a.m. and you go see the sunrise over basically like the temple of the, you know, yeah. the, uh the temples. That was the coolest thing ever. I would like to do uh, okay, what about Europe? Where's your favorite places in Europe? Well, I'm an Italy girl. I've been all over Europe. I love but Italy. I go to Italy. Like people in the South buy lake houses. We just go to Italy. That's yeah. what we do. I got married there. I was just there a couple weeks ago. We go to Italy. That's where I'm probably gonna buy a place. Where Italy. would you where would you buy a place in Italy? Um probably in Tuscany. Tuscany is so fucking it's the best. gangster. It's the best food. Um, I could live in Rome easy tomorrow. I, my husband and I really want to get a place down in like Malfi. Like we just want to own a bunch of property in Italy. Uh, uh, yeah. But everywhere, everywhere in Europe, I, there's no place I don't. I haven't been to any of the Scandinavian countries. I'm dying to do that. They're fucking insane. Yeah, I'm that's, dying to go to Copenhagen. Like, that is that's like a social experiment that's that you'll never see anywhere else where everything just works perfectly. Yeah, like people, everyone's everyone's in great shape. Everyone's tall. Everyone's mm -hmm. beautiful. Everyone's riding bikes. Yeah. They've all, they're all friendly. They have great food. They all work out. They're all fucking sauning and polar plunging into the fucking fjords. Right. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. I mean, Italy's a hot dumpster fire. Like it is, it is crumbling as we speak, but I go there and I just come alive and my husband's Italian. I'm Italian. So we're both working on trying to get our citizenship because it's not that hard to get. Oh, I mean, really? you got to like grease some palms, talk to some people. Where's the but best places to get citizenship? With the most perks. Well, anything I would like in the to EU. Get a Saudi citizenship. No, I'm, I something. can't. I used, oddly enough, though, when I used to live in LA, I used to work for like the Royal Saudi family that would come to LA every summer. Really? I was like their head concierge. I've lived like a hundred lives. Holy right. shit. 
Yeah. I don't really talk about it because I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about, but I was like 22. I was living here and I got the job because I worked at a fancy gym in West Hollywood. So they were like, one of the guys who came in was like, you'd be perfect for this job. You're a pretty girl. Like you can handle this. You're a people person. So basically all the Saudis come to LA. They take over LA in in the month of August. So I was in charge of basically being their concierge. So you want to go to Disneyland for the day. I'm taking the kids. You, I would go in and I'd pick out their houses, hire security, hire the nannies, all of that. Holy shit. So that was my job. That's how I like paid my bills for, and I would just work like one month and I, I, it was the wildest experience of my life ever. Really? Yeah. It was gnarly. And I didn't tell my dad what I was doing because obviously he was like, well, you know, they don't, they're not going to respect you. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, but the family I worked for was really lovely, but I was in charge one time of throwing a party and I didn't, I was so naive at the time I was in charge of like for one of the, one of the guys, um, God, I'm afraid. Am I going to get murdered if I say this? Whatever. Um, I was in charge of hiring atmosphere models and then all these women show up and I was like, oh, they're all hookers. So I rented a house in the Hollywood Hills. They they were not just models. I wonder what the most gangster passport to have is. Find that. Can you Google that? What is the best They say citizen? technically right now it's uh, the uh, Japanese. Russian, Russian? No. Japanese? Yeah, they say the best. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that off. I, I don't think me either. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it brings me great dishonor to not be uh, in my family. My dad's Japanese. What's the best What's the best passport to have? Finland? No, I want a place. Here's what I want a place. I want a, I want a citizenship. It says UK best across the board. Australia no. best for education. Well, we don't care about that. Well, I'm done learning. Yeah. Switzerland. Switzerland. Okay. Mm-hmm. I w- I'm looking for a place that's going to be a nice little tax haven. Yeah. There, Where if I get into a car accident, drunk, and murder a person, I can run to their embassy, and they're going to be like, don't worry. We don't find that illegal where we live. Right. You can totally do that. So I like Russia, a- Russian passport? Uh, no. I, I mean, think, you're already in with the Russian people. Yeah. I don't I don't think that would be my spot. Yeah, but I'm looking for like I want I want all the 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 bad perks. Mm-hmm. Like I was well, five country citizens of worldwide. Five top countries. Let's see what the five top countries are. I think you want an island. I think you want like Aruba. Oh. You want the Turks and Cake, Bahamian, like oh. you get away with a lot of shit. Cayman you just Islands. need Cayman Islands. You just need a boat. Islands. It says, is that what it's saying? Um, yeah, I, I had my greatest memory of, um, so I, I can quantify the happiest moments of my life. Mm-hmm. My 40th birthday on Bondi beach in a red speedo swimming in the ocean. Mm-hmm. I was the, never been happier. I've never been happier except for one time in Tuscany. We rented Vespas, me and my daughters and our daughter's my wife's best friend and our daughter's best friend, the four of us, the six of us, we were all in Vespas and Isla was too young to drive a Vespa. And so she had to ride on the back with me and we were driving through the hills and it was, it started raining and Isla was, I could see her in the little thing and she had her mouth open catching the rain and then she just pops up and goes, we need music. And I was like, and Georgia was nervous and I said, we don't have we don't have a radio and she goes start singing and i said what song and then she started going uka shaka uka uka <laughs> i can't stop this feeling just like a Screaming core memory of you and your the, family and i was with leanne and mm. georgia and it's raining and georgia does this little girl thing whenever she gets scared she reverts to fucking eight years old mm-hmm. and she was nervous because it was raining and she was looking at me f- to be i love when my daughters are terrified Mm. because they love me better like yeah. we got caught in a riptide one time in hawaii and they were being such cunts the entire day <laughs> and then all of a sudden when they thought we were going to die we weren't going to die there was a reef we right. weren't going anywhere when we they thought we were going to die there were like a hundred japanese people surrounding us they weren't dying right. they were going to die first and but they were terrified all of a sudden i was like god i love them when they're scared i love them when they're terrified and they don't know what's going to happen and they need me but that memory of that and then we went and we had bottles of wine and and you and I and I remember I posted a picture of it and people uh, the comments were like you look skinny Bert and I was like this is a great fucking day I lose twenty pounds every time I go to Italy I was just telling Santino that the other day I was like <laughs> when I go we go to Italy I mean I lost t- literally probably fifteen pounds on my honeymoon yeah. that's when I turn my brain off and I'm fucking relaxed I eat whatever the fuck I want I drink whatever I want I'm having gelato six times a day I'm having grappa at night I don't give a shit I'm smoking cigarettes and I come back and I've never looked better and I, that's best, where I just come alive we 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 went 
uh, when we were in Venice one one afternoon, Leanne's like, why don't we just let the girls get lost? Yeah. And we'll get lost and we'll ca- meet up with them later. <laughs> and <laughs> and we went and started having uh, fucking, uh, what is it? Not Negronis. What's the? Uh, uh, spritzes. Aperol, Aperol spritzes. spritzes. Yeah. And just walking around and you, and, and by the way, you're eating, but you're not eating like crazy and everything's clean and it's fresh. fresh. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking love it. So I got Italy. married there. I had a bit huge Italian wedding there last year. And I, I was just like, I just want to get all my favorite people to my favorite place in the world. And Destination it was, weddings are pretty gangster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think I was like, okay, I'm going to invite like 250 people. Let's see what happens. And then everybody said yes. And I just didn't expect it. So we had the biggest blowout party ever. I I let off fireworks at my wedding and the guy who did it was probably like one of Theo Vaughn's like Italian relatives. This guy was (laughs) like, you know, think of like the Cajun, like the Italian version of like a Cajun uh, backwoods guy missing a hand. And we set off such insane fireworks that they just started raining down on the wedding and people had like hit the deck. We almost set like all of Tuscany on firework and the guy's like, I do this every weekend. It was insane. It was the best. I love it. Week of my life. Switzerland's pretty fucking gangster. Yeah. Switzerland's pretty amazing. There's the way they live their life is it just seems there's a a a, a casualness to everything. Mm-hmm. Nothing's as serious as it is. Like we were in Switzerland and we were skiing, and then they brought us hot white wine. I think delicious hot white wine, and we're like, it's like noon, and the guy's like, ah, you yeah. have some. Yeah. I don't even know what accent that is. You, you, you have it. It's going to have a little bit. That's why I love Italy because they're like breakfast of wine that you like. And you're like, yes, I will take so a breakfast so of wine, and I don't feel guilty smoking cigs tonight. And I'm fucking. I all this talk about fucking wine. I'm like, yeah, just a little bit. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how we do it. Right. This is how we do it. That's Montel it's Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so you shoot your next. Spe- you shoot another special in two days. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, again. I don't know what's going on, and I'm sorry. I'm literally like, it's been a fucking whirlwind. It's been a whirlwind. So yeah, two days at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, Holy shooting the next shit. one. Yeah, so the one that's out now, I shot a year ago, and then you know we took a while to edit or whatever, and then I just sent. In, I was in Italy when I found out that they Netflix picked it up and they wanted it, and it was so all these great moments in my life have also happened in Italy, and then yeah, I'm gonna shoot this one this week, and then, and then taking some next? time off. What's next? I don't know. Um, it's got to be like a sitcom or yeah, something. Yeah, I have one. I've been in a development deal at a big network forever. So, you know, now that the Netflix special went really well, they're like, okay, we want the script tomorrow. So I got to finish that by, yeah. you know, Thanksgiving. Um, and then I'm going abroad. So it's been crazy. Well, when's your Australian tour start? Uh, February. This yeah. is the thing. I can't I can't express this enough. Yeah. <clears throat> I love- Why don't you be my mentor, Bert? <sighs> you want to be my mentor? I would love to be your mentor. This could be cool. No, I'll tell you the first thing I'd tell you yeah. is- I love living vicariously through other people traveling. Okay, great. I would say put all of that on your stories. Load your stories up so that it looks like one white line across. Mm -hmm. Because you may think that there are people that tap out, but your true fans are there for it. Because I know I am. Like I'm good friends with Big J and Lewis and Dave Smith. And when they do Skanks Fest every year, Mm -hmm. I can't get enough of that content Mm -hmm. of what how much fun it is. Like I can't go because I do different, I have a different touring deal and I can't, it's, it's complicated, but I've talked to Lewis about it before. I can't go there, so I can't watch it, but I want to be there. Mm-hmm. And like, when you say I'm going to Australia, I want to see the Australia you see. I want to see you vacationing. I want to see you, what you're having for dinner, where you're eating, what you're, when you're having wine in the middle of the afternoon. Right. I want to see the fans that come to your shows. Oh, like, I'm I sharing see, all That's of the it. number one thing I think. Most comics don't do enough of it. Listen, it, it, it this is my bread and butter. I share every aspect of my life. Yeah. My 30 day honeymoon in Italy, I, it, w- higher ratings than probably Chappelle got on his Netflix special. <laughs> like, fucking crazy. And that's how I've gotten all these deals because people yeah. are like invested in my life. Yeah, they yeah. want to see my husband dragging his golf clubs around Italy and they know I'm going to fucking kill him. They're like, why'd Jeff bring his <laughs> golf clubs to Italy? There's two courses in the entire fucking country, but he had to bring his golf clubs. Like, my whole new hour is about our honeymoon, the Italian wedding. Like, people are dialed into my life and they yeah. know. That's is there have you hit for you personally all your like played all the venues like yeah. you've hit all the spots. Yeah. Yeah. I did Tampa. I did Red Rocks. I yeah. think yeah. I mean Yeah, I mean I I I can't imagine. I look, if if nothing else happens in this career, if they're like if you know, 
if if the pandemic shows up again and we can't tour again, mm-hmm. I could just sit back and be like, man, I'm I'm really good for a couple of years. Yeah, like I'm really good. I I think now all my goals are more internal. Is like uh, really just all my goals are all not health. die. Yeah, my, all my goals are health goals right now. Yeah. It's like yeah. don't, like don't get over 240 pounds, Bert. Yeah. Jesus Christ, no one likes you at 270. Like I just I I do my goals every year for my birthday. Uh-huh. I do whatever amount of age I am. I am I just on my birthday last week. So I did my goals, and they're mm-hmm. all like, I mean, they're really crazy. One is uh, uh, communicate with your daughters every day. Yeah. Um, uh, take George on a trip by herself. Take Isla on a trip by herself. Uh, I quantified like um, uh, go on at least twenty four dates with Leanne. Just you and That's her. Right. Like just it's all they're all very. Uh, I learned the word intrinsic value, mm-hmm. and so I. I'm a, I'm a moron. I didn't know what it was, but I like it. I like building intrinsic value. And so my all my goals really this year are about health and family, communication and growth and building intrinsic value in myself. Like I went surfing for the one time and that and recently and I could get up on a board and I said, "Well, you should do that more." Like making myself uncomfortable like it's like going to a spin class. Yeah. I used to love spin classes. But the idea of going and signing up, because I didn't know how the sign up worked. Right. And, and then like getting a bike and then all that made me all uncomfortable. Do I have to get shoes? Do I bring my own shoes? Right. What are, the, are there the right clips? Oh my God. Like, and so I just would go, you know, I'm not going to do it. But making the effort to go to sign up for a spin class and and then maybe talking to a stranger or mm-hmm. all that makes you feel better at the end of the day. And so that all my goals really are this following year are mostly about that. Obviously, so I have some big goals that, you know, that are business goals but i i really just want to be like healthy i want to keep my blood pressure low i want to mm-hmm. keep my weight low i want to drink less i want to i want to smoke less weed i want to i want to run a 12k i want to surf i want to hike i want to snowboard i want to date my wife i want to talk with my girls i want to send them presents like out of the blue to make them feel special and so like that's all my goals really that's great if you ever want another daughter, I mean, listen, I would love to. I just sent her. I just sent her. I would a, love to. Uh, my dad's dead, so I would love love a trip. That's a beautiful thing, though. Going, I, I went to Europe with my dad, and it was the best fucking week of my life. Literally, this is the best thing you could do. I just sent my daughter uh, and her roommates a edible arrangement. The best. Yeah. Your dad of the year. Good no, for you. Yeah. Well, if you want to mentor me in any like business decisions, hey, I'll take it. Because well, me, my thing. dad is dead. I don't have a, a, I don't have a male in my life. Like obviously, I can take my husband's advice, but an, a male in my life, especially in this business, who I can call. That's that's you the thing that me bums whenever. me up. You can call me whenever. When I you can't can call, call my whenever. dad, I'm like, Dad, would you take this deal? Would you do this? Like, I don't have anybody to my uh, to reach for. I you you if you do not have my number now, I will give it to you. That is my. That is one of the best things that comes out of this business mm-hmm. is that we are all in this business alone, but we're all a big team. Right. We're all, we are a team. And I've, I've called Rogan is, you know, I can't say he's a mentor, but he's been like a big brother to me. And I remember calling Joe one time I got offered a TV show and I was like, should I take it? And he was like, absolutely not. Really? And I was like, really? And he goes, please, please, please. If you're listening to me about anything, do not t- do this. And I went, cool. And I, I've Joe's, I mean, I guess, to say he's a mentor is weird because I've known him so long and I and I do consider him just a close friend. But he is like a big brother who's given me great fucking life advice. And but that's the beauty of getting. I mean, Tom is like a younger brother who looks much older than me. But <laughs> he's. But like I've leaned on Tom for advice so yeah. much. I mean, Christina was great to me when I went and um, met with her. She she was like, "You can call me too." She's like, "I'll I'll I've tell given, you exactly." I've given what you. her the worst advice in her life. <laughs> I've given her such bad advice because then Tom always goes, why would you tell her that? I'm right. Like, That's what I'm doing. He's like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll just call Le- Leanne. Maybe she'll call Leanne. I'll call her. By the way, she gives the best fucking advice. Yeah. And she knows me so fucking well. No, please, 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 please. Uh, if you ever, uh, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Well, I really appreciate that. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm kind of like doing my own thing and I've just kind of stayed in my lane and it's been paying off, but I'm trying to figure out like, as all these, you know, new opportunities happen, it's just like, you know, which, which route do you take? It's, yeah. it's scary. Anytime. Any I really appreciate time. it. I appreciate it's really, it. And good it's luck really nice to meet you. Seriously. Crush the next special. Thank you. Holy shit. I can't wait to see it on Netflix. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, you know, 
I let's hope I don't die before it because I'm like I just got to get home tonight. I, 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 get think that, I think that all the time. <laughs> yeah. I think that all the time. I was just thinking that. Hope I'm <laughs> hope I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, I mean honestly, I'm so fucking tired. I need an IV. I need to just I'm gonna land at 2 a.m. Turn around. We have production tomorrow, and then I put on that a, a new new glitter suit, and we just fucking do it. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Do you leave tonight? Yeah, I leave tonight. Fly out tonight, and yeah, back to Atlanta. God bless you. Hey, well, God bless go, you. You know, we also need to. Uh, I'm gonna hit you up about Italy. I will plan your whole uh, we trip. Should, I want to text. I want to text. We're gonna exchange yeah, numbers. I want to yeah. text about travel. I because um, I would love your advice, and I will plan any trip. I get horny and hot for this. I I my favorite thing is to send people to the best hotels and the best places in the world. I got you. By the way, right now Leanne's yeah. frothing. About it. <laughs> yeah. We're we're going to Paris. No, I'm we're telling going. you. We're going I'll tell you to exactly Paris. where to stay. I, I will plan the whole trip out for you, and she will get whatever fucking Goyard bag she wants. She deserves it. She's a queen. Fuck. I got yes. you, Leanne. <laughs>